Sock yeah, Tigers, so Sock Tigers in the winter time, he plays Sunjay. Yo, the Chavo Towers? It's lit. That means Connecticut's in the building for their boy as we get the light double feature. All right, so I feel like this has become like the uh, a bit more of a traditional match for us to see. Fox versus uh, Palutena. Yeah, um, yeah, so let's make moves top eight. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. Three Foxes, three Palutenas. Character kind of good. Yeah, kind of okay. Now, I don't know if that we're going to see that in the long haul of things, but at least it's a good indication of early on, like, what's valued in a character here in Tri-State. Because oh, yeah, they call this character being good from a mile away. Wow, and that, that teleport cancel, just to punch him with the back air. Jet's movement with Hollow Town is so slick. Like, it was always one of the features of him as a player that was just nice to appreciate. Whether it was in Smash 4 between his Sheep and his Ryu, or what we're getting a chance to look at with Palutena, but it's something that Light has to really take advantage of Fox's speed in order to like cancel that out. Yeah, and it just seems like, uh, not like last game, but Light is pushing the envelope a little bit more against Jen. Not like how he's doing against Suarez. Right now, he's in Jen's space, he's in Jen's space also, and... He's using a lot of box illusions in this game. Ooh, yeah. that killed? All right, word. He really wanted to get out of there. All right. Nonetheless, he's finding his follow-ups. doing plenty of damage to Jen. And Light's sitting with a pretty hefty lead right now. This yeah. as far as the percentages are concerned. I, I, honestly, even stage control-wise, it seems like... Uh, like, Light is dictating where a lot of these bouts are taking place on the stage, and even though Jen is responding well enough, he's forced to approach on Light, and that's never a good sign. Man, if he calls out somebody else when I'm smashing, I'm gonna leave. Like, he's, he's been netting all of these kills just by reading their approach options with up smash. Like, I think it's a sign of just, like, how, how one should approach like punishes in this game is just don't even bother with like going for the combo if you got someone at a high enough percentage just swing just do it yeah pretty much um i don't want to say the game is very swinging but the game is very swinging <laughs> so it, it rewards that style of play very well and there's a lot of little aspects of it that that showcase that it's like your shields aren't as good you don't get as much off of grabs like some characters struggle to combo longer and characters that do combo don't have as long of strings I feel like you can even see that in Light's play. Like, if you take a look back to how he would play in Smash 4, where a lot of his strings were just multifaceted, like, it would take forever for a string to end. Wow, and with that being said, Jen takes that game from Light after Light was emotionally in front the whole game. He was actually winning that whole game. What what happened here? Uh, Jen was just playing really solid. Uh, it just seems like from stock two to three, he took the, he slowed the pace down a little bit more and just started anti-airing Light's approaches instead of Light running in on him and up smash. So. Honestly, that, that's what I'm trying to see. Uh, Alan was honestly one of my picks for winning today's event, even with, like, the caliber of talent that we have. Although, to be honest with you, Bars, this is the kind of match I would have expected for us to see in winner's finals or grand finals. Yeah. Uh, not loser's top eight. Hey, man, you know, sometimes stuff happens. This is New York. <laughs> so, a lot of people just can randomly explode, so... I feel like that's always been the case for Xeno as well. It's just like there's such a concentrated pool of talent that you can't really accurately predict who's going to be wearing a bracket. Yeah, I mean, especially with the parody that we're seeing in this new game. Um, all these rankings are... All the rankings are starting, oh! starting over, and he just... Hello? I didn't want to interrupt you, but that was something else. We've been seeing Jen constantly go for down tilt into forward air as the response, but this time he read that Light was going to go for the quicker option and just opts to cover it with down air, and it worked. I think I think T.O. Devin needs to put that. That's crazy. That's com commentator Devin set that up for us in the next game. <laughs> that, that was hype. Once again, call him out with the up smash. Yeah, man. So, the, yo, the Chavo Tower has got to open up like a swear jar at the house, but instead of 
it swearing just every time Light takes a stock with up smash just raw. That sounds terrible. Somebody would definitely die on the first night. They, they're collected enough for like a whole month's utilities with that. <laughs> like, Light will single handedly pay the bills with his up smash. Yeah. Um, right now, um, Jen just spacing out beautifully. Spacing his, aerial, spacing his arrows out beautiful, beautiful, just to keep light away from him, and is proving very good. Like he's just waiting for any single mistake that light is gonna is gonna make, and he's just every time he, he takes his hit so far. He parried the get up attack. He parried get up attack, let it up from up tilt. He wasn't able to get that much of a chain out of it thanks to good DI from Jen, but dude, it's it's terrifying what this character can do. Yeah, explosive play from across the stage. That's something. That's cheap. Good stuff by Jen. Boys, we're finding ourselves in a position where Light might be out of the tournament soon. Yeah, and Jen just, he's just catching all of Light's approaches. Instead of uh, Light being the one punishing approaches, Jen is just hitting him for every single approach every time he comes in. He's taking percent every time he jumps into Jen. Like, this is looking brutal. Yeah, took that stock, but um, good stuff by Light, but Jen is just putting out s some of these like low committal options just to see how Light reacts, and every time Light reacts to something, he's getting hit for it. Like, often it's Nair that's the tool that Politan is able to get the most off of, but one thing I want to highlight, Jen's throwing a lot of back air mostly. Yeah, a lot of back, you know, a lot of back air and dash attack. I think he's just throwing out those safe moves that have the shield on it. Just in case, like he has, he's coming out with an aerial that is gonna win. Ooh. That would have been wild if Jen actually got just the raw up smash. Uh, what, a, what a twist of fate! I have to shut off the stream for that one. <laughs> <laughs> to pull the router, <laughs> just knock it off the wall. Thought I'd ready to turn off all the lights. It's crazy. Oh, that's it. He almost, he almost got an up air out of that. I'm really not trying to see combos start with Fox Illusion after they nerf that move, please. Uh, Fox Illusion can actually kill it at very high percentage. So. Light's only allowed to live so many years in the future. I'm definitely not trying to see Fox Illusion kill. I'll laugh. I'll laugh on stream. Okay, but right now, um, Light's bringing this back a little bit. Just taking his time, not jumping into him with airs as much as he was, and then with that being said, he gets caught out the air with a back air. And that means that... Light is down at seventh tonight, right? Yo, yeah. Yo, did we, did we finally, did we do it, guys? Light finally didn't get top two. It finally happened. We did that. Light, for, Light lost against Palatana because Ray's been playing pretty confidently as of late. What, what is this? A winner? No, this is loser side, right? Two, yes. One, go. This is a loser. Yeah. Yeah, loser's top eight. We're still in it. Not losers quarters. Um, not there just yet. Oh no! Loser semis. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and a uh, good good. Devin is train. complaining about uh, fractions while King Arc is as we were getting nair trained. Yeah. What is this salt mess? But what is this? Yeah, yeah. Ray not getting touched. Um, until <laughs> right after I said that. Yeah, yeah, you have to say something, man. No JVs in this house, man. But either way, um, as far as control of uh, Battlefield goes, we've already explained Ooh, quite a bit that yeah, that was gross. Yeah, Mega Man likes the stage. Mega Man can control the stage very well. However, Ray has shown that he's very proficient with controlling platforms with Polytennis tools. Whether he's just denying them through sharking with up air and neutral air, or having multitudes of landing options. Um, you know, King Ark missing that punish, uh, but he was safe because he landed on the platform. Oh, and he's, he's trying. He's trying. He's trying something. Yeah, it's just Ray is just dominating neutral right now. Um, King Ark hasn't really been able to get a footing. Because every time King Ark gets back to the stage, he's getting thrown right back onto the ledge. And this Nair is just doing everything for him. All right, that would have been cute. I feel like a lot of the issue here is just the fact that King Ark had a very slow start to this match. Uh, like I brought up earlier, he SD'd very early. His second stock was handed 
to, to Ray on a silver platter. And he's just now taking race first stock. Meanwhile, he's looking already like he's at his wit's end here. Okay. So. Down air, so at a gross angle. If he was turned around, that would have been it. Yeah. The, those, that nair always sends you in the direction that you're facing. So. At least it's consistent. Yeah. Yeah. In other games, they'll just send you in wrong directions. And that should be killing. Yes. Yeah, Very convincing fashion. And game one's going to go to Ray. Yeah. It just seems like um, this King Arc wasn't ready for that. Just ready for that pressure that Ray was putting on, especially at the ledge. Uh, I want to say he racked up like, maybe most of his percent. Well, I'm not going to go to the ledge, especially that last stock. Game two is going to bring us to Pokemon Stadium 2. And we've already seen before that King Arc can perform well on this stage. Mm -hmm. But we've also seen that Ray can dominate on this stage. <laughs> what? Hey. What? Hey. We're playing top tiers. Let's go. My man made the switch to Pichu? Real fast. Whoa, okay. Now we have something different on the board. This is a character we, we actually haven't seen. Like, all tournament, actually, because Rishi played Link earlier. Really? Yeah. His Link is looking pretty sick for what it's worth. Um, but Pichu is another one of those characters that's alongside uh, Palutena as being pegged as being a really strong character in the early meta. And that's mostly because he's just, he's one of the glassiest, cannonist glass cannons we have ever seen in Smash. Yeah, it's kind of wild. Cause he, could, he could forward smash that ledge and kill people at like 80, but he could also die like 60 to crush them mark. So... <laughs> Space Army died in a question mark. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's kind of it's crazy. Yeah? But um, also that down tilt that he just did, down tilt can confirm into most things. Uh, down air, um, aerials, thunder, such a good utility move. Yeah, the forward tilt's what I'm worried about. That scoops at the ledge. It low profiles, as most things do in the future. Um, but it's frame five and it kills. And that's something that Ray's gonna have to worry about, especially if Ray finds himself at disadvantage off stage. But huh, King Arco was in his disadvantage off stage because Pallet just went off with that nair. Usually, you know, um, it's kind of hard for characters to avoid something like that. Um, and that's why he just threw up in there. It covers so many options, especially in the air and on the ground. I think this is one of the matchups that's going to highlight why Nair is such a such an often used tool, Palatana, because it covers a lot of space around her. And, yeah. like, th that's an obvious feature that we've seen out of the character. However, a lot more of uh, Palatana's kit requires her to be a little bit more precise. And precision is not something that is easy to come by when fighting Pichu because of his small stature. Yeah, um... Peaches can tend to low profile a lot of things. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, especially, he could, off of one hit, he could put you in a very bad situation. Uh, but right now, he's struggling to find the kill. He's mostly out of all those hit confirms and throw confirms at this point. He's really just going to throw out forward. So. Yeah. And there's going to do it, though. Yeah. I mean, listen, past 200, most things are going to kill. Yeah. Yeah. He had no setups. But, uh, yeah, right now, let's see what he could do to bring this back. Because right now, um, Ray's just been in control the whole time. Down tilt. Ray dodged the forward air. Okay. <laughs> Nair but went into Nair looking like Captain Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Single hit Nair leads into full Nair. Yeah, probably the best utility move in the game. It's really something. Yeah, because the general game plan against Peach, Pichu and Pikachu uh, is that you want to stuff their approaches. Because, like I said, if they get a hit, they could take that for a good 50-60% off a straight hit. And Ray is not letting that happen. He's throwing out every single arrow possible to keep Pichu away. He's just done? Yeah. That was crazy. Kingar came into this bracket so confidently, and Ray just snuffed him out. Yeah. Damn. I mean, he tried it out. Look, so, not for nothing, he did get into top eight. So, he has nothing, he, you know, he has nothing to be that angry about. I um, mean, yeah, like, he's, I believe that means he's sharing a placing with light. Yeah. yeah. No bitch. Yeah, obviously. Collectively. <laughs> Collectively. <laughs> We're not. We're not. Except for the one, no. but hey. <laughs> he has his blocked anyway. But, <laughs> hey, so we're going to go right. 
It's gonna go right into this uh, winner semi smash. We got Sinji and Stocktaker. I mean, Stocktaker is just going off. He's been showing it with Village. He's been feeling a lot <laughs> more confident with the game. Oh, oh some, something happened. Something happened. Okay. This man stood up immediately. He was like, slow down. Okay. Disconnect the controller. Everything's working. They're all good into it. They're going to go right into it. Doesn't look like they're going to restart the match. Okay, so we're going to continue on with game one here. Uh, as I was going to say, Stocktaker has been feeling a lot more confident with his uh, Villager play. The fact that he's supplementing Villager with Wii Fit Trainer has sort of like breathed life into his play. He's feeling a lot more of uh, Ultimate. Although he's also come to terms with the fact that, like, regardless of all of the nonsense, he, he liked Smash 4 a lot. And now he's just playing a different game. He sort of had to go through the five stages of grief now that I think about it. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people kind of over exaggerated near the end of Smash 4 because they were done with it. But a lot of people, you know, enjoyed it at the end of the day. The only reason we kept playing it for so long. But, uh, yeah, it is a good game. But, uh, with that being said, we were playing Ultimate. And both of these characters are probably better than the previous iterations, especially Pac-Man. No, yeah, they've they've both seen interesting buffs. Where Pac-Man, a lot of his combo game has changed, and the way that Sinji has to lay out his traps is different. Uh, Villager, it's sort of like they've condensed what the character's doing. Like Nair's still really good. You know you're gonna go for spiking with down air. They just gone ahead and just gave him that to all the turnups. It's not just a free turn up. I don't know what just happened, but <laughs> Sakura got sent off <laughs> of the platform and then got orange to death, but I, I, I honestly don't know how that happened. Yeah, that's a setup. This man just parried both hits of the key so he could sit there and wait for the axe. Yeah, you, you got hit by that. I don't know how you got hit by that. You got hit by that. You gotta hold that. They managed to make the uh, the slingshot moves better. Forward air and back air deal more damage. That's OD. Yeah, Don't you know why they did that. Yeah, yeah, you ever reflect it like point and blank, and they just like the villager just explodes at like 80? Oh, I've been the villager. I, I've exploded before. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they buff that significantly. Um, On top of that, axe is a legitimate out of shield option. And it's something to watch out for with Stock Taker. The tree is up, and he's looking to get Sinji off of him. He's done uh, jump V reverse axe, and it's covered so much space, and it's so violent of an option out of shield. Because like, yeah, the pellets are whatever, but they're not always gonna kill. They're not. They're really just a harassment tool that happens to kill. The yeah. axe, axe is killing you. You know, it's just funny watching Sinji be aggressive, because um, Sinji right now he's chasing stop taker. He's not taking. He's not taking the setup camp out. He wants stock taker done. And uh, I think that is good. That's some good adaptation from Sinji, uh, because he knows Villager can also play the long range game, and maybe even better than Pac-Man. Yeah, Villager, I can safely say, can hold the zone stronger than uh, than Pac-Man. And even though Pac-Man has unconventional tools, at the end of the day, they don't do that much. They hold like set pieces, and Sinji just has to lay the traps for confirming his kills. Villager, though, is always moving, constant projectile pressure, and is able to zone out of those. Uh, those areas where he locks down very effectively. So interesting, interesting interaction with the orange and the Lloyd rocket. It seemed like the Lloyd rocket went through the orange and still hit stock picture. So um, yep. something to note. Yeah, um, orange doesn't care about any of the uh, projectiles that Doja can set up. Orange is really good at this matchup. That being said, uh, Sinji taking that second stop. And just to clarify, uh, is... So, armor on the side B for Pac-Man, lit. Let's go. Bowling ball, even more lit. I messed with it. Oh, dear. Excuse... <laughs> Y'all gotta remember, this is still Sinji we're talking about, man. Yeah, yo, Sinji just tacked on the percent in this game. He did a solid 50%. Right off that one interaction. Yeah, for those of you that don't know, Bonus Fruit, even if it's pocketed, he could spawn another one. You can have a maximum of two on the screen. And the reason being is because if Villager holds the Bonus Fruit out, he can't spawn it again. If it's in his pocket, it's technically not on screen, which is the only parameter needed for uh, Pac-Man to bring out a second one. Yeah. At least there's some shenanigans, let me tell you. Yeah, in previous games, um, he, was, he wasn't allowed to do that, no matter where it was in his pocket. So he had to kind of hold that until Villager died, or he just forgot about it. Pocket, whatever. We caught that apple. 
Yeah, catching the bonus fruit is the best thing that villager can do, because even though, like I just explained like why it's important to keep uh, bonus fruit in the pocket just for the sake of having it, it's more important to be able to take away uh, Hydrant consistently. Whether or not you use Hydrant or you're just denying uh, Sinji Hydrant, super good. Oh, okay, I thought he was gonna come down with the axe. Oh, oh but the apple bounced! Where did it come from, though? <laughs> he, threw the the he threw the apple down. Oh, no! Okay, for a moment I thought it was a, the water of a hydrant, but he, yeah. No, it hit the Lloyd! It hit Lloyd and it bounced! It hit the Lloyd oh. and bounced up. Yes, that is beautiful. Can we, that needs to go on the archives. That's, can, we, can, we, can, we, can we put that on Twitter? That's wacky! I need, I need to tell my family about that one. <laughs> that was... Oh, my God. That was beautiful. That's OD. All right. <laughs> Let's yeah. let's see it again. So Village of Pac Man. And this time we're going to Town and City. Okay. Yeah, Town and City. So uh, the difference between Town and City in this game is that the blast zones are bigger on in this iteration. Yeah, the state. Bigger thick. upwards. Yeah, bigger upwards. So I could understand why Stock Taker wanna go to the stage. You know, he go a little bit a little bit, little bit longer off the top, where Pac-Man's tend to combo. And um, also can he, he could kill horizontally a little less. I mean a little easier, excuse me. It's up already. Let's go definitely two thousand. Alright. So once again, catching the apple. Although Stock Taker hasn't really gotten anything started too heavily here, I want to see more neutral airs out of him. Neutral air has traditionally been a really good way to just pressure Pac-Man when you're super close in. You don't have to rely too heavily on fairs and bears, but it's yeah. just constant uh, combo breaking. Yeah, and the way Sinji is using this calculated aggression now, um, in game one, he was kind of just hunting down Villager. Now his hunting is more calculated. He's doing less of just jumping into Villager and more of setting up his Hydrant and then jumping into Villager, which is a big difference than what he was doing before. Oh, and God. The Hydrant is everything. Sinji is on. <laughs> you get him out of there. Yeah. <laughs> Alleviate all the pressure. You know what? I don't want to deal with this right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's too many on the screen. This is crazy. <laughs> Did the game just lie? Cause they're like <laughs> they're, they're, they're might have actually. Oh my god, that was that was some stuff. This game does not want to see this battle. Uh, I barely want to see it. But you go stuff by Sinji. Uh, yeah, he's just racking on this damage and stock taker. He needs to he needs to find a game plan that works because the range game doesn't work for him anymore. Cause Sinji has adapted to it. Cause. He knows he's hanging back a little bit more, and he's not running into a lot of things like he was in game one. Let's see what, let's see what, let's see what the stock taker does to kind of counteract this. Yeah, I kind of want to see a bit more traditional stock taker play where he's going to force the zone, go in for more of the close range battles. He's got the bell in hand, see how that comes into it. That pocket is wild. It has a really big range. It's got big range. And, oh, and he came out of shield with a triple turn up up there. Looking for an opportunity to yeah, I knew I was gonna hop behind. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. On that 89%. Stock still got a bit of work ahead of him, but now it's not too bad. Yeah, and, and Sinji just shielded that whole tree. I don't know if Stock knows, but you can pocket Fire Hydrant as it's flying at you. And it comes back as like a fire hydrant that you can drop. Yeah, but. It just seems like whenever he pockets the hydrant anyway, he already has a he already has a hydrant in the pocket. So whenever hydrant's flying at him, I don't think he's really thinking of that option. But you know, good stuff coming off from Sinji, just like keeping this lead, keeping Villager away from him, which isn't which isn't very easy. Villagers, Villagers in a weird place right now because a lot of people are like underselling what the character can do, but then you see when he's like boiled down. Um, he's like, a lot of his tools work really well for where the meta sits right now. In fairness, this is just a very strange matchup. The way that Villager can duel it out with Pac-Man, like they both have really good close-in tools. They both have, as you can plainly see from this set, very good zoning tools. Um, but it's a matter of how they match out each other, and I feel like Sinji just has a better grasp of what to do here. Then stop taking. Yeah, and it just 
Right now, it just seems like, you know, Sock Taker is just searching right now. Searching for an answer, and he, yeah, that backer is kind of strong. Oh, that, yeah, that's going to kill. All right. Yeah. Stock Taker's out of it, but he's going to be alive in the loser's bracket as Sinji is going to advance to fight the winner of Ling Ling and Odyssey. And that means that, ooh, that means that uh, Stock Taker's going to have to fight Jen, I think. Mm. But I also feel like as far as this matchup is concerned, he's going to be able to stay more mobile as Palutena because she's going to be in the air a bit more. Now, mind you, Peach covers the air very well. But a lot of her game is bringing the combos from the ground to the air. She doesn't have too much that just stays air to air. And then trying to catch landings, it's a bit difficult Ooh. when both characters are in the air. Right there, we're kind of seeing the range that Palutena can have against uh, Peach in the air. That back air has been so good. The forward air, too, is so quick. It has a nice range on it. See how Ling Ling kind of adapts and fights against this range. You can see Odyssey weaving around Ling Ling in the air. But there you go, getting the combo started on the ground. This is what you're talking about, Hangman. When it comes to damage being on the board, these percentages are almost a non-factor because you're going to see both of these players building up so much damage so quickly. Where a lot of the damage is going to really come down to is once we start to climb to the higher percentages, who's going to confirm their kill better? Because we know these guys are going to be able to pack a punch with their combos. It's all going to be a matter about how well they evade the offensive when it comes time to kill. That's right. Just like you said, I mean, the damage initially, it looked like Odyssey was out to a really strong start, but Ling Ling and Peach can just bring them back in their favor. And like that, where it's 96 apiece. And Ling Ling, though, has Adi at the ledge. Let's see. Nice, good punish by Adi. He's going to throw Ling Ling off. See if he can find a KO here. Looking for the explosive play and can't find it. I feel like that move was so, so, so strong when the game first came out. It's still really strong, but I think people are learning to adapt and look for it, have the eye for it, as Ling Ling showed there. Yeah, the move itself has a very small tail with the spark and light. There you go. Never mind. You're Sneaking that one in there. Yeah, yeah. You got to be, you always have to be looking for it. Always kind of have to keep your eye on her. And if you're just, oh, never. Ling Ling firing back. <laughs> Up smash taking that one. Dead even game right now, Hangman. When you take into consideration the two players that are on board, regardless of the characters they're piloting, it's going to be a mile a minute kind of battle. They're comboing fast. They're killing fast. Stage control is going to be swapping from both sides back and forth as we got a really fun match ahead of us. Yeah, for sure. And it kind of comes down a lot to, like, if they overcommit or if they make a mistake, they respect the other player and their character so much. Like, I know if I whiff something... Hold on. Fling at the ledge. See what he can find. Nothing. Okay, he gets out of there. But they respect each other so much. Like, you just have to space so well against the other character. You're going to be eating either a ton of damage or put yourself in a bad position, like, on the ledge. And Odyssey cannot find his way off. Ling Ling doing a great job uh, pressing his advantage there. But another explosive flame from Odyssey. It's going to be a good tool for him in this matchup, it looks like, Hangman. I feel like a lot of what we're going to be seeing is these players trying to use their low committal options to force a reaction. So on the side of Odyssey, you're going to see a lot of explosive flame. We're going to see a lot more neutral air. Just something that's going to occupy a lot of space or some sort of movement reaction. And on the side of Ling Ling, he's going to have turn up in hand. We're going to see him be able to do dare and neutral air just with the purpose of forcing Adi out of his positioning. He's going to be able to scoop super well. But when he's trying to recover with Parasol, it's much more difficult. Now Ling Ling yeah. sits on his last stock. Yeah, and you know, that was amazing patience by Odyssey at the ledge. Ate up Ling Ling's jump and waited out the parasol. He knew he wanted the back air. That was going to be his option. And he waited for Ling Ling to kind of spend all of his options. And he had to float towards the ledge at some point. Odyssey just called him out. And here we go. Nair is coming out from Odyssey. And he has the platform right there going for the back air to end that one off. 40% already on Ling Ling. And he still hasn't found the stock yet. The back air was a bit of an interesting option because normally we see neutral air to either finish off the chain or forward air for a bit more confident. But... Being as the back air was the option, I'm curious to see if Adi was just trying to see if Ling was going to go for some sort of a countermeasure, be it back air or neutral air of his own. Ling Ling, and that's going to be stock. Good job by Ling Ling. I like how he, he protected the ledge anyway, just in case, respecting Odyssey and Palutena's recovery, but Ling Ling going to have to find himself off the ledge. Looks like, ooh, okay, the rage on that Fin jab finisher. Hold on. Ling Ling. I not expect the jab to be able to catch out the Peach Bomber because of it. Odyssey sitting very comfortably with control of the ledge. However, missing the back air is going to give Ling Ling a chance to return to the stage. Yeah, Odyssey two for three now on those back airs, catching Ling Ling out of his up B. But again, Ling Ling, he just can't find his way out of the disadvantage still. Off the stage and see if he can find. He's in the hot shot back, back and forth, but Odyssey just scoops him out of the air. Adi is not afraid to challenge any of these motions. As soon as he has control of the ledge, he's making sure that Ling pays the price to come back on stage. If it's not a stock, it's going to be a whole lot of percentage. Okay, look, definitely looking for the KO. You can't get too antsy here because Ling Ling, he's a veteran player. Not that Odyssey isn't. You know, Odyssey's still kind of a young gun, though, in my in my books. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, the parry. I, is that the first parry we've seen this game, actually? At least for this game, yes. I think so, yeah. 
So that's just showing, like, Ling Ling, I feel like pairing, I was thinking that on the car right over here, it is just such a message of like, oh, explosive flame, that's it. That's it. That's what we were talking about that move. If you aren't paying attention for it, you don't have the eye for it, it's going to catch you. And honestly, you got two KOs off that explosive flame. She just laugh in your face after she beats you. Is yeah. that what happens? She just giggles in your face? Yeah, That's both, so rude. Th these characters are so stylish when they went both of them have amazing windscreens. Interesting enough, it looked like Ling had started to throw out the back air, but it didn't even clank or do anything with the explosive flame. Just really a force to be reckoned with, so you really have to have the eye for it, as we talked about earlier, Hangman. The explosive flame is counted as an intangible projectile, so it's not mm -hmm. something that can be interacted with. Right. It's very similar to Zelda's, Zelda's Din's Fire, which... <laughs> if you really think about it, Explosive Flame is just that on, like, 10 but like, scale. But, like, a thousand times better, at least. Like, it's just so good. So, But, I mean, Dead's Fire has gotten slowly better throughout the games, and I think we're seeing the best form of it. But in either case, no Zelda on the screen here. Uh, you got a different princess and a goddess on the screen. It's going to be game two. Ling Ling saying, hey, man, let's take it back. Uh, Pokemon Stadium 2 is good for the starter. Let's bring it up for the second course, too. One thing I want to bring up that you had mentioned right at the end of game one was parrying. We had saw a parry and an action right out of it. And that's almost been like the note of this tournament is, yes, you can get a parry. You can time it right if you know what the attack is. But it's much more important to know what your response is at a parry. Right. And that's something that we, we've been seeing slowly as the bracket goes on is that these players are knowing when's the right time to parry and like what's the right action out of it. What are they going to be able to get the most out of yeah, and that second step is so important because people eventually, like, the meta is going to get so far into parrying is that people will be baiting out parries using multi-hit moves and things that you can't punish afterwards or trying to parry, see what you want to do, and then bait it out and punish whatever you're going to do after the fact. So, I mean, it's going to get so meta and so next level, but... I feel like... Yeah. It's indicative of the fact that defensive options aren't as strong in this game, so, like, you really have to weigh out, like, is it worth it to go on the defensive? Like, am I going to get enough payoff out of this? Or, and a lot of what we're seeing in this particular set, all these guys just clashing at each other, go on the offensive, who's going to build up the better offensive, control of the stage, have their tools at the ready, and instead of going on the offensive, just completely, like, overwhelm their opponent instead of trying to turn a reversal. All right. Odyssey fighting his way out of the corner. I like that. I do not like the forward smash, though. Ling unable to punish it, but he still forces Odyssey into the ledge. See what he can find here. Good. Uh, okay. Good patience by Ling. Catching the, the lag after that air dodge. <laughs> Parry. Throw. Okay. Okay. Too far for auto reticle to proc. Okay. Wow. Okay. Odyssey, I love it because the first game he was really only going for back air off stage. He mixed it up, changed up the tempo, sped it up, and Ling Ling couldn't catch up to that forward air, and he, he paid for it with a stock. I love how late hit of Nair is able to link itself into Nair. Do you so love that? Like, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so... So I haven't had the displeasure of fighting a Palatine. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> but, let me tell you, dude. <laughs> it takes forever for that to go up. Oh, nice. Good job by Ling Ling catching the teleport on the way up. Very nice stuff. Ling Ling recognizing when Palatina was vulnerable uh, on her way up to recover there. And Ling Ling, you know, he brought it back in terms of stocks, but I like the way Odyssey is playing with his lead right now. He gave up the stage positioning, did the little projectile warfare, got a grab, and now he's pushing the advantage even more. He's just finding these opportunities where the stray hits will lead into the strings, and if they don't, it's just going to get him so much stage control. He's forcing Ling into these really uncomfortable positions, whether or not he's coming back off the ledge or he's high off the platform. Reset. That is so much that damage works. right there. That was nice. Yeah, dude, that was a really good eye by Ling Ling. He, he identified that combo immediately, and look at this. He's just taking off with this percentage. He is just doing such a good job on his offense right now. Ling Ling with all the answers everywhere. Dude, that's terrifying, and it just goes to show how observant of a player that Ling Ling is. He's very soft-spoken as an individual, yes. but when it's, he's on the sticks, this man is roaring at he, anyone He lets a band. controller do the talking for him, you know what I'm saying? That's Ling Ling 100%. Odyssey, I feel like he's looking for an up smash here. You can see the way he's, he's looking for some KO option. It looks like the explosive flame, but Ling Ling able to find the KO option first. Forward air. Ling Ling, what an answer. That second stock was beautiful by Ling Ling. Took the first stock, and then he was able to take the second as well. Very nice. And it seemed like game two was completely in Odyssey's favor. The way that he was able to win out most of the trades, control most of the stage. A lot of the ledge interactions were on Odyssey's favor. And all of a sudden, Ling Ling's excellent play, really good decision making, has brought him into control, but he's going to be losing his stock without putting any percentage on, leaving us at a dead even for the final stocks. Hey man, what doesn't that neutral air do? KOs, combos, uh, multi hit. Can uh, you tell me? I, I can't team with it in doubles. I think you could. I think that if you had a Palutena that just neutral aired, you'd do pretty good in doubles. But anyway, <laughs> Ling Ling trying to fight his way back. 
into this game. He does have a little bit of a deficit here. He's got the dot. Oh, that wasn't the uh, dot. Nonetheless, but keeping Turnip in hand in this matchup, I feel, is really important because we've seen it a couple of times today, uh, exclusively from Ling Ling. But Turnip is devastating at the ledge. It gives another option. And we start to see one of the flaws in Palutena's kit is that like, she can't put out every area at once. She's got to commit to which one she leads in. And yes, neutral air is really, really good. Ooh, okay. Oh, Not enough power on okay. that F-tilt. Yep. Don't hold on. Ling Ling has to... Oh, he can't uh, really from there. Odyssey oh. dropping a little taunt, too. You know what, though? We're at Xeno, so it's two. It's best two out of three. Uh, all the way to winners' finals, right? Winners and grands? Yep. And winners, losers, losers or no? Winners, losers, grands. Great. Okay. All the, fi all the big finals, really. So, great job. I mean, Odyssey taking that one down. I mean... First game, neck and neck kind of came right down to the last hit. This one, a little more in Odyssey's favor, 100% between the two players as he closed out the last stock. Dropping a taunt, failing himself, and moving on. Punches, punches ticket for himself into winner's finals against Sinji. Yeah, no, but here, and yeah. especially here at Xeno, Palutena is the talk of the town. Yeah. So now you get a chance to see what happens with both of these characters being uh, better to some degrees. I think it goes without saying that Palutena got a bit better from what she was in her uh, Smash 4 iteration. But the the game has changed now, where a lot of what made this matchup difficult was the fact that Palutena can respond to the projectiles with a reflector and then solid aerials. Now it's sort of inverse. Her aerials are phenomenal, and she has to commit a lot harder to her reflector. She can't just put it out and spam it. Right. Yeah, we're seeing, I mean, the way Jen is fighting this one out, he's looking for some parries, but even after he's landing them, he's unable to get a follow-up. So it looks like Villager, and the way that Stocktaker is taking this matchup, just insanely, like, well-paced and in his advantage and keeping everything nice and slow. And uh, playing it safely, because you really don't want to get hit by Palu, because she hits super hard in this game. Yeah, one of the odd features of uh, Stocktaker, uh, in consideration of the, the high-level Villagers, is that he in particular feels very comfortable against all of the terrible matchups the Villager. By that, I mean the ones like Mark, the ones like Cloud, Bayonetta, and most importantly, Palutena. He never worried about the character because wow. he had a lot of matchup experience. Uh, he attended college in upstate New York, and upstate New York happens to be home to one of the best Palutenas, Arch, who is still staying dedicated to this character. He stays in contact with him. So Stock has a bit of that wealth of knowledge to uh, look at for what he needs to watch out for. And on top of that, he's been on fire lately. Not only is he going to be taking a lead in this game, but he's been performing phenomenally over at Aeon. He's holding down tournaments on Long Island very consistently with the duo of Villager and We Fit Trainer. Yeah, man, for sure. I mean, if we're going to talk about his, his winner's run, he took out King Ark, who was able to take a set off of uh, Light's Roy, I believe, coming through uh, pools. But then also, I mean, you want to look on the other side, Jen, he just got off a set fighting against Light, and fighting against Light, and then fighting against Stocktaker, complete day and night, like 100%. You got to change up your game plan. You got to be ready for it. It's not an aggressive fox who's going to be in your face. It's going to be this villager who's going to be sitting back and throwing the projectile. So let's see how Jen responds here. Good DI by Stocktaker, though. That Nair, pretty powerful KO option, but still not enough to take it yet. What a, ooh. Ooh, what a tech, the awareness. That was so smart. Like you said, matchup experience shining through here. Yeah, this man is going to be living. And you bring up an interesting uh, aspect of play where it's like, yes, this is definitely nothing near Light's Fox. But it it's also a very strange song and dance when it comes to Villager because Stocktaker is also, like, unusually aggressive with the character. You're going to see a lot of his zoning is less holding the ledge, holding the sides and platforms and baiting in Jen and more establishing projectile pressure and moving that pr uh, pressure along the stage. Let's see what Jen can get here. I feel like Stock Stocktaker has just done such an amazing job getting out of the disadvantage not letting Jen push it too much and then resetting the situation where his character is best uh, in terms of controlling the neutral. So Stock's just been doing a really good job of that. Like that little follow-up right there. Like looked like that was unsafe. Jen swung at him, but Stocktaker knew he could uh, nair safely and fight against Jen. So that was really nice. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of nair. It is the yeah. premier combo breaking tool. It's a great get off me tool in many regards. And in general, it's just a solid tool that Stock Takers managed to put great use into for the sake of just backing the opponents Ooh! off. <laughs> like a Tom and Jerry cartoon, the bowling ball from the top. You know, Palutena probably has like a lump on her head. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Watch those cartoons in the morning, but... <laughs> Stock Taker with the lead, which is exactly where you want. I mean, as any character in the cast, but when you play, you know, a zony character like Villager, you really want it, especially against a powerhouse like Palutena. And I feel like this is one of the meta matchups that if you play any type of zoning character, you have to take notes of. Maybe not Villager, but the idea that, like, you're constantly using your sh your short-range tools to keep the 
uh, the Pilot Senate in check. Mm -hmm. So like you're constantly seeing uh, Stock Taker threaten with Nair. Uh, he'll also break off with Jab just so he can set it up as a get off me tool, build up a little bit of damage. And when the tree is on board, knowing that the axe is always going to be at the ready as an out of shield option. Right. This is a very critical moment in this game one for Jan. I mean, he's in a fine position if he takes a stock soon, but he can't push it too much because that's exactly what Stock Taker's looking for. Let's see what he gets down throw. Up air. That is going to connect. And just like that, that's what I'm saying. Hey, man, that was really clutch by Jan. He really needed the momentum to shift back into his favor. And he took just that. And look at now we're looking for a Nair. Got the villager on the platform. Can't find a lot, but that Nair, man, the saving grace is Stock Taker in this game one. Yeah, like we've spent a good amount of time talking about how well Stock Taker's playing this matchup, but Jen is no slouch either. This may oh, be no taking way. place in loser's bracket, but Jen is one of the favorites to win tonight. Oh my god! That's what that's how you do it. You wait the entire game, you're behind, you let the villager feel comfortable, and then wham! Just smack him down air off the stage. That was amazing. Well played. And that was one of the hold on, let's watch this replay real quick. Yep. It's just I feel like Stocktaker did such a good job getting out of exactly those situations all game, but Jen just finally landed that final that was so clutch, dude. Jen just played so clutch. And it's Jen being very aware of habits of stock taker. You take note how he does a lot of uh, wall jumping and then coming up with an aerial. And it's so easy to catch that habit out with a down air. And in very explosive fashion, Jen's going to take game one. But game two is giving us a bit of a different dynamic. We're going to town and city, and that is not Villager on the board. That's going to be We Fit Trainer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yo, okay. I, yeah. okay. You, you're going to have to do your homework it's, for this dude, one. It's, dude, Xeno, man. Like, it's, it's, any character with a projectile is fair game in top eight at Xeno is how I feel. Any character that takes their time. Oh, uh, Jen with the, you know, we did point it out, but the costume change too. It's a big one. I like the green. I like the green of Palutena, but either way, we're going to have, you know, a lot of people have been talking about We Fit Trainer a lot recently in terms of damage output, the way she can buff herself up and become this crazy powerhouse character. Right now, Jen. Looks like he has kind of a grasp. Oh my goodness, Jen. the stage? Yeah, that was it. That was it. The shield just poking right through. Jen taking care of business once again with that down air at the ledge. Just taking off with this uh, game two. I don't know, man. I feel like Stock Taker played so well game one. Like, I feel like he should have been feeling confident in the villager. He made one mistake off stage, and that's where he lost the game. But now that same mistake ends up getting highlighted immediately into game two. So right. it begs the question, like, was this a good switch to lose fit? Oh, that parry. Oh, he's so brave with these parries. Those backers are so powerful. Oh, okay. Yo, the ball just <laughs> came back for round two. <laughs> oh, my God. The Jen, I'm telling you, man, like, I really like the way he plays ultimate. He's been impressing me pretty much since day one. The way that he looks, you know, not just for the parrying, but the way he uses movement, the way that he goes off stage. Like, he's just playing really, really strong ultimate right now, and that's what I'm looking for in players. Him, like, I feel like ZD is one of those players, too. Oh, boy. Not a good air dodge right there by Stock Taker. Jen, commanding lead here. This is going to be. Oh, oh okay. Stock Taker. Stock taker, stock giver, either uh, way, gave that one up. I don't blame him because it would have it would have been a really, really long, hard road uh, to get back in there and fight against Jen. Again, I'm saying like I feel like the villager. I, this is kind of hindsight too, you know. Obviously, a little easier to say yeah. after after of what course, just happened. But I feel like his villager. It was just he made one mistake off stage, but aside from that, he played like 98% really, really well against Jen game one. Maybe he just didn't wasn't feeling it or something. But either way, he had a nice run today. Uh, that's for sure. Taking uh, was a fifth place. Yes, he is. I'm not, yeah, all right, fair enough, fair But, nonetheless, it is Palutena versus Peach once again. See how Ling Ling adapts this time against a different style of Palutena, I feel. Ray and Adi take a different approach to the character. They use the tools very similarly as there's some good tools here. But Ray has been showing that he can get a bit more aggressive with the character, and he has a lot of confidence with his position with the character, where Adi highlights a, a lot of the good movement of Palutena. Ray really goes to show like, what these tools can accomplish. Yeah, and speaking of Palu's tools, we saw Odyssey do a great job challenging Ling Ling in the air. The the dogfight, if you will, between these two characters seems to be a little stressful for Peach, and we're seeing it both not just what Odyssey did in their last set, but also what we're seeing from Ray right now. Air to air, I feel like Ray's been winning most of the exchange. There you go. Look at the pressure too. Just the range that Palu has, you know, both forward air and on her shield. And you can't challenge the back air either. The yeah. shield, yeah, the invulnerability on the shield is crazy strong, so. On the plus side of things for Peach, floating makes a lot of her aerial pressure not as committal because Lincoln threatened with, say, for instance, back air or forward air and still dip out. Like, he doesn't have to over worry about overextending with his aerials while still threatening with massive damage. Jump out by Ray, but he was able to get, but Ling was able to get the punish. Now we have Ling trying to cash in at the ledge here. Let's see if he can find. Oh, he, he committed with the float right there, and Ray, good recognition, used the, air, used the directional air dodge, but here we go. 
Ray on the hunt for the stock. Up air, explosive flame Nair. There's so many good options right now. It's going to be the Nair, and it's barely going to take the stop. Well played by Utopian Ray. And there was even really good DI from Lingling. It was just too far into the yeah. stock. And I feel like it's just a matter that Lingling managed Ooh, to... That shield like, is small. That's a small Ooh, shield. Ooh. It doesn't matter, though, because he was in the disadvantage. So Ling was in the disadvantage, so whatever. It doesn't matter how small Utopian's Ray Shield is. But at the ledge, Ling's forward air, going to clean that stock up. And I feel like this is very, very reminiscent of what we saw in Ling versus Odyssey, where Ling was always kind of trying to fight back the stock deficit, but then the Palutena would fight back and just start comboing. But speaking of combos, here comes Peach. Really strong stuff right there. 40, almost 40% on that one from Ling Ling. Yeah, when it comes to combos, you can never count out Peach, man. So they're always looking to make the Twitch clip happen. Yeah, we saw what happened day one when this game dropped, when everyone wasn't playing for two weeks, you know? We saw all the clips. <laughs> all right, down air, Ling Ling reaching with the forward air. It does not connect, though. Good platform ca or edge cancel there by Utopian Ray. It's just such a good movement option. I mean, a lot of people are, ooh, the snag and the nair. Hold on. Oh! Turn up in hand, get Ling Ling out of the air. He tried Good to follow tomorrow. up with a Nair, too. After He tried to play off the bounce of the turn up. Very nice stuff from Utopian Ray. He likes to be cheeky in this play sometimes. Yes. Yeah, totally. Okay. Forward tilt right there, catching Ling Ling again. Recovering with Peach seems really hard in this matchup. We've seen so many Palus just fight him and find a lot of success, especially with that back air eating up his jump and then forcing him to up B early and then just waiting for him to fade close enough towards the ledge and back airing. It's just been the game plan you know, for Odyssey and also for Utopian Ray here, Hangman. Yeah, look at the way that Ling Ling is still looking to pressure onto Ray. Like, he doesn't care that he's on last stock. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care how brutal that last stock was for him. Like, he's still looking to turn the screws. He sees the 92% that's on Ray, and he's not backing down from being able to take that out because this is still a very doable battle. Right. Ling Ling's a soldier, you know what I'm saying? Like he, like, he, like you said, he's, he's kind of quiet in real life, but when he's playing Smash, what's the gameplay talk for himself? But Utopian Ray taking off with this lead. Again, the dogfight is just really, really hard for Peach. Looking for the forward air, too, and Ray is just throwing out that back air over and over, almost landing the explosive flame, too. This offense from Ray is nuts right now. I think he's looking for a down air there, too. Yeah, he's been winning a lot of down air in this match, and we've seen... Ooh! The... What a tech! Yeah, he, Save this jump, too? <laughs> Yo, we got the whole package with Ling Ling. That was nuts. And I think he's just kind of had enough of just dying off stage. You know, he's like, you know what? You know what? You guys got it. I'm going to respect that back air. I'm going to save my jump. I don't care what happens to me beforehand. I'm going to get back to the stage. Ling Ling, though, still on the hunt for Ray's second stock, and he finds it right there. The forward air challenging the teleport, barely able to grasp uh, Utopian Ray. <laughs> This stare at 24, by the way. 24. That was yeah. huge. Yeah, turnups are no joke now. They're a really Seriously. solid item. Ooh. And that's just base turnup. That's not counting Dot Eye or less Stitch Face come out. But let's let's hope not. Let's hope the Ling Magic stays away. Wait, wait. Hold on a second. He has not pulled a Stitch Face on stream yet. There? Yeah. Not enough. I thought it might be. It was close. But now, oh. Oh. You doink like that. Shout out to Goofy from Kingdom Hearts because I felt that one. <laughs> 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 That back air, what a tool, as we've seen you know, in the last two Peach Palutena sets you know, in this matchup. The back air is just such an amazing tool. KOs, covers the air-to-air -air very well. It's just you can't really challenge it. It's just really good. So Utopian Ray taking that one game one down pretty convincingly, i got to say. Yeah, it's, it's all about that upper body and vulnerability that the shield offers. We see it every so often from dash attack when that comes in clutch, but Ray's putting in so much use from the back air just so he can constantly challenge Ling in the air. Like, he's not looking to go for trades. He doesn't want to even attempt to hazard the thought of trading because he knows that Peach can make one hit turn into a combo, turn into a stop. Yeah, that is the tough thing, too, because we've seen, I feel like Ling Ling, he'll go back and try to, like, take a breath, like, maybe pull a turn up or something, and both Odyssey and Ray have been reacting with the auto reticle and just punishing him. Like, that's just a really good long-range tool to keep the pressure on from Ling Ling, no matter where he is on the stage. And it looks like Ling Ling, though, is going to opt for something with a little less real estate. It's going to be Battlefield trying to keep the battle a little more tight. Like you said, Hangman, the combo potential on this character, Peach, crazy scary. It's nuts. And this is an especially good stage for, for considering Smash Ultimate because up there is a lot better of a tool just for sharking through raw damage. Mm -hmm. And then Link could string that into a hit. We've seen up air go into down tilt, and that tends to start a lot of those famous Twitter combos. <laughs> Um, but aside from that, it's just a lot in Peach's kit that gives her the opportunity to threaten space on this stage. And I feel like that's going to be super important for fighting any Palutena. Yep. On the other side, too, though, you have to be so scared of Ray. Like, his combos have been very nice so far. And if he can use those platforms to extend them, potentially carry off the top with an up air, it's going to be scary for Link. He's got to be really careful where he positions himself just like that. The explosive flame, not quite enough power yet. Ray's going to keep throwing him out, though. Looking for the counter. Ling, not getting caught by it, though. 
All right, that's an option that we've seen a couple of times from multiple power tennis today, is trying to go in for this counter, expecting some sort of a ledge uh, ab uh, above the ledge recovery. Oh, do you see him jump? My God, that was the Matrix right there. He just reacted to that so, oh my God. I don't know if he reacted or it was natural or something, but that was really close. I think the bottom of that dress is singed. Dude, Explosive Flame forces some kind of reaction. Doesn't matter if it hits. Oh. Just for the fact that it takes up so much space, it's just so dangerous. Palatine is bringing so much to the table once he plays. Got Nairs, and this is what I'm talking about, getting caught in that platform. That's going to be three Nairs, and looking for the auto reticle. It's interesting. Oh, scooping from underneath the ledge. Yep. The up smash, very nice. Ray, man, that was really, really smooth. He's been playing so well lately, yeah. and I brought this up earlier, but, like, he's just going to SD as I guess him up. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> Wait, do you? Hold on a second. I, what, uh, you willed that into the world. You said that he's playing so well, and then he's like, you know what? Uh, Palutena, I can recover from. Oh, Ling Ling with the offense. Okay. This is what we're talking about, man. Peach never out of a, never out of a game, never out of set. No, absolutely. As long as long as the Peach has somewhere to land to reset their combo, they're always one combo away from taking a game back. So it looks like Ling Ling's, you know, he's starting to adapt to the explosive flame, and he's jumping over it. That's his new option. Instead of being forced to go low, it's really smart, and it's actually really working out for him. I feel like in other situations, Ray would have already scooped the stock off stage, but Ling opting for the double jump is a really good adaptation. Well, every time Ling is forced to recover low, it's usually Parasol, which can get caught out by back air. And we've seen that multiple times already. If he's coming in from high, he has all his aerials still at his disposal. And then if he manages to hold on to it, Float, which is, is going to completely open up a realm of opportunity. Speaking of, I mean, Float opening up realms of opportunities, looking for that Tomahawk was so quick by Ling. And he has fought his way back into this battle. Just like that, both these players, you know, ooh, pretty even in percentages here. Good use of the Nair there by Utopian Ray. Almost taking the stock from dead to center stage. Oh, goodness. That's definitely going to do it, though. The explosive flame. Ling Ling potentially on his last stock of this tournament. Hangman, can he fight back? He's, like I said earlier, he's always got the opportunity. And Utopian Ray sitting at really high percentages. He's going to mess up <laughs> some of his combos. And just like that, calling out with the up smash. That's another move that has upper body invincibility. So... <laughs> Ray has to respect some things. The composure, the composure by Ling Ling was amazing there because he got hit by the very last hit of Palutena's Nair, and he was looking to punish it and take the KO. Instead, he just kind of nodded, accepted that he was in the disadvantage now, and got a KO super quick. That is really good presence of mind and really good discipline by Ling Ling to not get flustered there. Both of these guys are so stone-faced when you play. Honestly, you wouldn't know that this is top eight of a tournament if you looked at their faces. They look like they're waiting for a bus. <laughs> yeah, they're chilling. Do they know? Never mind. Anyway, in there, <laughs> Ling Ling with the offense. He took the jump too, but Ray able to maneuver his way back down to the stage, able to find a back air. This is danger for Ling Ling. This time he opts to float. Okay. Oh, okay. Great job by Ling Ling baiting that out. Now it's Ray who's Ooh. in trouble. What's he going to find? Oh, Ray. So smart. He's, oh, back air. That's going to do it. That's yep. going to do it. Ray taking your 2-0. Ray, you know what he did a couple times throughout that game, too? Is that he used teleport instead of going to the ledge. Because being trapped at the ledge sucks. Like, it still does. Like, it's still... You don't want to be doing it. So what Ray would do is look for Ling Ling, trying to reach out, trying to catch him off stage, and he would just teleport to center stage. So smart. Just get yourself out of that situation. You're Palutena now. Pizza's on the ledge. Life is good. It's really different. But, right. uh... But we don't got to worry about John for the time being. It's going to be Sinji. And the first bout of the Palutena Gauntlet is going to be Odyssey here in Winner's Final. So this is going to be our first best of five for the evening. And we're starting things off with Final Destination. Yeah, Odyssey, I got to say, like, I really liked his Fox in Smash 4. And I really like similar traits in his... Hold on. Yeah, no, that's not going to work. <laughs> Sinji has so many recovery options, dude. But you might as well try the explosive flame. It can work out, but it's it's gonna be a little tougher to catch Sinji than it than it was catching uh, Ling Ling's Peach, for example. Yeah, explosive flame is gonna be one of those tools where you're gonna have to like really trace where Pac-Man wants to go. If you're gonna look to punish the side B, you have to keep in mind it's got a lot of armor on it. And on top of that, if you're looking to just put, place it wherever it lands, you have to follow where's Pac-Man going to draw the line. Wow, the recognition by Sinji. He. Got that, that scaredy little uh, directional air dodge. Able to punish the lag right there completely with the stun and the forward smash. Very nice by Sinji. Wow, that was crazy. Okay. I, I love the way he's using that forward air too. Like, it, it kind of showing that you can, like, a little bit aggressive approach with Pac-Man and turn it on when you want to. And I got to say too, Hangman, his grab is a lot better in this game. But wow, the turnaround forward smash. Very nice. I think he was facing that way, actually. But forward smash either way. Or up smash. What am I talking about yeah, right now? It, it's <laughs> weird because it's it's so far ahead of him. It, it has a wider hitbox than it did in Smash 4. It reaches so far up, but I digress. Uh, Pac-Man has a lot in his kit that lets him fight a character like this. 
Uh, mostly in that Sinji has always been one of the Pac-Man that's able to like press forward with his kit as he sets his traps. So you're going to see a lot of up air, a lot of neutral air, a lot of forward air as Sinji tries to move forward with his bonus fruit, the fire hydrant. Um, what I don't expect to see a lot of is trampoline. We normally see trampoline set up as a ground trap for, uh, for Pac-Man so that Sinji limits movement options. But we know that there's going to be a lot of airplay when it comes to fighting Palutena. Yeah, as you said that, I mean, you can still make use of it, even if it's not going to be as common in a matchup. It can definitely cut off, like, he's playing against Little Mac, you know, I think going to be on the ground all the time. But against Palu, you know, you might want to do it every once in a while. But either way, both these players duking it out. Let's see. It, it's interesting because I feel like in this game, there's so many characters where there's so many things you have to keep track of when you're fighting them. For example, Snake, a you know, popular character. You, oh, hold on, grab. Right. Oh, the combos? Up airs? It's nice. Good jump out by Adi, though. Well, you gotta keep pay attention to so many things when you're fighting Snake. Pac-Man's the same way. You gotta pay attention to okay, the trampoline is it down? If it is, how many jumps are left on it? Oh, the forward smash! He just went right into it. Rare misplay by Sinji. I mean, I feel like he's so patient, so good at recognizing situations, and he just he just that was just a misplay straight up. Yeah, there's not a lot of options Pac-Man has because that forward smash covers so much at the ledge. You would have had to have dropped down and then do something at the ledge, deal with right. Palutena controlling the ledge. He would have been alive, possibly, but... A anything's better than what happened. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nonetheless, it's it's still a very doable match for, right. for Sinji. He's not really having that much trouble with building a percentage, as uh, shown on Adi. He's thinking 101. Obviously, but, yeah. Uh, Odyssey, he's, he was respecting that belt. He's holding the shield, man. That used to just be the forbidden strategy against Pac-Man. Up smash, a little bit of charge, too. Great knowledge by Sinji. I mean, you want to talk about people who have been playing their characters for a really long time. We were talking about John numbers earlier. His his counterpart or his rival, whatever you want to call them, they're weirdly, their fates are weirdly intertwined somehow, playing these lower tier characters in Smash 4. Sinji's sticking with it, though, and Pac-Man definitely looks like a stronger character, but I'm talking about a character that got stronger between the two games. Palutena, definitely one of them as well. Good mix-ups there by Sinji. No one thought he was going to go back to the platform. I definitely didn't at least. Odyssey didn't. He forward smashed the other way. I actually really like the forward smash option. Mm -hmm. If it was aimed properly, even if it didn't hit the win box from it, would have ended up moving Pac-Man away while he was in free fall, and that yep. would have been disastrous for Sinji. Totally. It was a great option by Odyssey, but Sinji just picked the better one. Here we go. Sinji trying to fight his way off the ledge. Definitely really scary against Palutena, as Odyssey showed in that second stock go though good use of the key though and just like that Sinji's in the lead I feel like Odyssey like he had the lead for such a long time but the lead against Pac-Man like his strategy doesn't really change like he's still gonna sit back and just wait for you to do something and, and throw the project the best projectile for the situation up smash is gonna reach yes it is and it's gonna take the stock Sinji three bells into smashes to take it that's really really clutch Pac-Man play by Sinji he was down uh after the second stock able to make it work out though it's just a matter of Sinji knowing his tools so well. The fact that Bell is like naturally very solid anti-air because yes. it has that upwards arc, it's going to cover a lot of that aerial play that Adi's going to want to go for. And it just so happens that he's always catching Adi on the short hop. So he's, without a doubt, going to be able to reach with a lot of his up smashes. Uh, it looks yep. like we're going back into Final Destination for Game 2. Uh, I'm curious to see if Adi's forced to switch at any point. Looks like he's going to go back on Palutena, and I feel like Palutena is the better one, but Adi yeah. does have his Fox at his disposal. Yeah, that's right. And I, I think, too, like an interesting point is, if I heard correctly, like Sinji and Light have played a couple times already in Ultimate, and I think Light defeated him in two sets. Yeah, I'm getting the nod from Devin, so that's got to be good information. He, would, he wouldn't do me dirty like that, but... <laughs> so it looks like... Yeah, but, I mean, Light... Light's Fox, Odyssey's... I haven't really seen Odyssey's Fox in this game, but Light's Fox is obviously one of the best in the world. So it's going to be, just because it's light on Fox doing it doesn't mean that it's Fox necessarily, you know what I mean, causing, causing the uh, the W. Of course. And the way that it sits now, Adi has Fox more in the pocket and he's practicing it more. The Palutena is a lot more polished and it's very indicative of the fact that we're sitting here in Winner's Finals with it. But at the same time, I feel like it's also a completely different approach to the game where with Fox, you're constantly threatening landings. you got to try to juggle. you got to try and trap the ledge. Palutena, it's a lot more fight in the air. It's a lot min more minimalist, I keep saying, because it's like Nair does so much work for you. Bear is so safe to poke around with. Ooh, look for the counter off stage. I mean, going off stage again against Pac-Man, I like, you got to mix it up. I don't, I don't care how good a character's recovery is. Sometimes you got to get out there and look at that explosive flame. Catching him, Odyssey. See what he can find now, respecting Sinji's side B. Just keeping him at the ledge, though. Good roll on by Sinji and getting the forward tilt, too. Unable to find anything with that hydrant, though. The fact that Sinji's been able to poke away at a lot of these offenses from Adi is also fascinating because it's like Pac-Man's not known for having that great of boxing tools. We see Sinji do well, 
but right. as a whole, he doesn't have a lot of range. His normals are kind of stubby, and he doesn't really have the speed to be considered in the same range of brawlers like Falcon or Mario or even the Spaceys. But we see Sinji putting a lot of good use into that quick forward air, which you highlighted earlier. Mm -hmm. Neutral air has been a great breakaway tool for Sinji. Oh, trying to time that. That was so cool. I was like, what is he going to do here? Because Odyssey was in such an awkward position. Sinji, though, he always has the answer. Yeah, unable to find it, but I love what he was looking for. Yeah, the spacing on that particular trap has seemed to have changed for Smash 4. Um, my guess, Sinji's best bet would be to throw down a Hydrant while they're stunned because he's missed that down smash on multiple occasions. And ooh, this is a point in the game where you cannot afford to be missing those. Right. Absolutely. I mean, think of how different the match would be right now if Sinji was able to hit that down smash or connect with something like a Hydrant and get a KO. The lead would be in his favor. He'd be running away a little bit more, you know, controlling the tempo of the match. Good snag of the apple by Odyssey. He throws it back, too. An interesting option, too. Like, an option you have when you have the fruit is hold on to it. It's one of Pac-Man's, I'd say, probably his best option that he has, actually, in terms of controlling the match. You can hold on to it and make him wait. If you just throw it back to him, I kind of feel like you're doing him a favor. You bring up an excellent point, and I always like to like like item play is so big, especially for Sinji. Not even just Pac-Man, but Sinji bases so much of his Pac-Man play around what he can do with the bonus fruit mm -hmm. and the infinite options that are available to him. If you hold on to it, he can't spawn another one, and you still have access to plenty of your kit between Palutena always having her auto reticle and explosive flame, and then if you Z drop the the bonus fruit, then you have your aerials available to you. I like that ledge play by Odyssey, too. It's so easy to get antsy when that bell is flying at you. You want to trigger pull a roll or a ledge jump, but Sinji waits for that stuff. Good good knowledge by Odyssey and, and really good discipline, too. Okay. Wow, oh. I like that footstool attempt, but he got a grab afterwards, too. That was just really good option coverage by Odyssey. He couldn't get any cool fruit combos, but he was able to get the grab. And now we're seeing Sinji really needs to make this comeback happen quickly. Well, I don't think it's going to be his plan, though. Yeah, <laughs> He's nah, going to take is... it nice and slow. This is still Sinji we're talking yeah, right, about. Right, yeah. <laughs> and it's still back, man. He has a lot of tools, but they take a good amount of thought. You can't really rush them. And especially in the situation that's at hand, if Sinji's not careful, he can leave Odyssey with a two-stock lead. And at that point, really? he's so really? close to being able to tie it up. But grab say otherwise. In, in my mind, like that interaction where they're both hugging shield next to each other for a while, that could have ended in a lot of different ways. Pac-Man grab towards the bottom of that list, to be honest with you. Yeah, the, the move is not nearly as much of a joke as it used to be, but yeah. it's still not fantastic. Grab doesn't have that much range, and Pac-Man generally doesn't get that much off of it. I think it's just the fact that he could just threaten space with Ooh. it. Good knowledge right there. I mean, that could have shield that Hydra could have shield poked very easily. Instead, the back air is going to connect and take it. It's a good parry by Sinji, though. He kept himself alive you know, a couple seconds longer until he ate the back air, but either way, it's just good, good knowledge, as we always see from him. Now it's just a matter of figuring out how Sinji's going to approach this because even though he's sitting fresh on his last stock, it is his last stock. Meanwhile, Adi's still sitting clean with a stock in reserve. Yeah, and I mean, Odyssey, if I'm Odyssey right now, I'm kind of looking at the clock like, all right, two minutes, 30 seconds. If I run away and I start to be the, you know, start setting up the camp, you know, popping open the tent, making the fire, making the s'mores, doing all that stuff, he's the one who has to approach me. And does Pac Man really have what it takes? It's kind of a gut check. Like, Sinji, do you have what it takes? Like, you've, you've kind of dictated the pace of this match. Can you take it home if you only have two minutes on the clock, a stock to take, and then a little percentage? We're going to find out. We've already seen early on into this set that Sinji's not afraid to get aggressive with Pac-Man's tools, even though they're not really designed for that. Right. Yeah, I mean, he kind of set he kind of sent a message very early on with those forward airs, and now we see a little bit of the advantage coming out. Odyssey tossing that apple away. Bites his way back, though. Very good stuff. Maneuvering around the Pac-Man options. But that, okay. The Hydrant fighting against the Nair is a very good option. Let's see what we can find here now for both players. Oh, good air dodge by Odyssey. That was very nice. And one thing you always have to remember when fighting against Sinji is that, that he's always got one more trick up his sleeve. There's always something that he's practiced in the lab, something that he's read online, something he's seen other Pac-Man do, and he holds on to that for when you're not paying attention. Not only that, but he wrote the book on Pac-Man. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even know, like, does he just study himself? I don't understand. Ooh, that grab, barely getting Odyssey. You saw him reel back in his chair a little bit. He did not like that. That was dirty. He tried pushing Adi into a position where he could get shield poked by the bell. That's devious. That's one of those things like I'm talking about. It was like those little things to watch out for. Now, Adi was safe in that situation, but maybe another time. Maybe that'll work. Maybe that'll leave an opening for Sinji. I like how Adi faded. He feigned right there that he was going to attack uh, Sinji while he's side being. Instead, he just dipped out. He said, you know what? I have the lead. I'm going to relax. There's 50 seconds left on the clock. Let's, let's just chill out a little bit. See what happens here. If I'm... 
Sinji, I gotta figure out something quick to take the stock, and then Odyssey can sit in the platform. I don't know, man. This is this is looking like it's probably not gonna happen for Sinji, but if it does, it'd be one of the most amazing comebacks I've ever seen. Yeah, you can he, see him throwing out the smashes now too. He would end up having less than 30 seconds realistically to try and end out an entire stock on Adi, who at this point in the game he is not afraid to go for the clock. A win's a win, man, and especially when you have to consider that he's trying to tie Show it up on the, on the board. Platform. Oh, what? What? Whoa, 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 right and, and then he's going off stage. Okay, I don't like this, because this is exactly what Sinji wants to see. That's 40%. Odyssey could just be coming out of invincibility like two or four or five seconds ago. It said he ate 40%. Oh, no. What is going on here? Sinji, are you serious? Are you going to make this happen? Are you kidding me? Oh, Bro. my God. He almost no. did. No. Oh, my no. God. Oh, my God. He almost went and did why? it. Why? Odyssey, why? He just made it so much more stressful on me, on you, <laughs> on himself. Sinji, that's exactly what Sinji wanted. He almost played exactly into it. Oh, my God, dude. Crazy I kept oh Adi in it. But look at the situation. If he charged that a little bit longer, oh that would have been it. Adi would have been kicking himself, man. You have to be kidding me. I The second he jumped off, and then Sinji went off stage too, right? And that was the greatest bait that we saw probably all game. He's like, come out and get me. And Odyssey's like, yeah, I'll do it. He's got that He's got that young man flow. You know, he's like, I'm going out there. I'll get you. I'll get you. I don't even care. Look at him. He's still pumped up. Oh, my God, dude. I can't believe that. Welcome to New York, Az. <laughs> yeah, right? You said it. Taylor Swift said it. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so 1-1 one, one on the board. We're bringing ourselves back to Final Destination. And Sinji, no fear. I think that's been stated perfectly clear. But Adi's still playing really well. And even though he ate massive damage towards the end of that uh, that game, it just goes to show like Adi's able to play with the lead really well. He's able to control space. But Sinji will not be denied. Right. And look at Sinji, too. I mean, one thing I really respect about him, obviously, like, his pacing and his general tempo is kind of slower. He wants you to, he knows, he understands his character's advantages. Hold on. Oh, he grabs the bell too. That was cute. Okay. Okay, Sinji. All right. He, he understands that Pac-Man's advantages come from a long range. So, ooh, good use of the back of though, challenging the bell. Very smart. Sorry, I keep getting cut off by this by this action, but Sinji's so good at fighting from the long range. Why press the issue? Why get close? But you saw he's able to really hit the acceleration when he needs to. He's coming down the last five seconds of that match. He almost clutched that out. Oh, my God. I mean, you, you asked the question best. Is ooh. Sinji ready to do it? And I think this is just going to show, man. Oh. Like, you got to be ready all the time. And thanks to the trampoline, we're not going to see the down air take a stock, but... Hey, Adi's ready to pull the trigger just as willing as Sinji is. It, probably more. I mean, if anything, in that last stock in that last game indicated... Oh my god, Adi wants to fight. He, I feel like he just didn't want to go for the timeout back air. Very close. Sinji holding on. If I'm Adi, I'm so frustrated right now. Between the down air not KOing and that back air coming so close, and now you have to fight Sinji's Rage Pac-Man? Not good. Yeah, it just leaves yourself in a weird situation now, because it's like Pac-Man's building up extra damage, Sinji doesn't need to get aggressive, but he's going to. It just, it ends up being a very frustrating battle at this point, because Sinji's just going to keep on getting away with his game plan, and you're constantly just sitting there like, well, how do I kill him? Yeah, right. And, and you know what? And that's exactly the game plan that Sinji wants to have, is like, I want to barely live, I want you to feel frustrated, I want to kill you with an up smash instead. Odyssey's thinking right now, man, if that down air or that back air KO'd, I'd be feeling much better about this situation. But instead, Sinji taking off with the lead big time. Oh, God. And those combos coming out, too. Yeah, when you see the Galaga ship, you already know at least 30% is getting built up onto the opponent. Oh, yeah. Each time, too. It's, it's one of those things where uh, once you get to about 80%, then, yeah, it's a no-go. But... Yeah, and the Galaga ship is how he started making that comeback in game two, like at the almost the buzzer beater that Sinji had. That was just absolutely nuts. Either case, though, he's sitting on a very nice two stock lead. Odyssey's still on the hunt for this KO. Can't find it. At this point, I feel like he's shown the backer so many times. I feel like a Tomahawk would be a powerful tool right now. And you can see Odyssey's really just looking for the KO. And so is Sinji, fun funnily enough. Sinji's wild, man. <laughs> yeah, he is. Like, it's a wild, wild ride with Sinji. I brought this up as a little footnote earlier on into the set. Sorry about it. That side B has armor, a lot of it. Oh, yeah. More than you would expect. So it's going to be very difficult oh, for Adi to challenge that. <laughs> it's like Houdini, dude. He just keeps falling out of these KO options. Yep. You, oh, you spiked me? Never mind. I got a trampoline. Oh, back air me? Never mind. I got a good DI. Oh, you forward tilted me? Never mind. I'm out. He doesn't want to. Oh, never, now he's really out. <laughs> we'll be seeing that stuff. Back throw Odyssey. If I'm him, if I'm Odyssey, I just run off right now. I'll be like, okay, I got the stock. I'm going on the next game. Look at the shield pressure coming out from Sinji, too. He's not He's not going on to the next game without taking the, the, uh, the match win with him. 
Like, he's putting on so much pressure on Adi. He's forcing Adi to second guess so much. Oh, yeah. Interesting. I feel like he should have gone for a back air, at least some guaranteed stuff there, just keep the pressure on. Because I saw Odyssey Man in his player camp shaking his head quite a bit, and that's exactly what Sinji wants to see and feel in the gameplay. Oh, yeah, Adi got caught out on the apex of the bell, so it was too high for oh. a uh, full hot back air. But that will do plenty that of killing. This Look at that. I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Odyssey, he's got to compose himself. He did a really good job. Game two, playing the whole seven, eight minutes. What do you guys have here? Eight minutes? Seven. Uh, how's about seven? About like 30. Seven. You're holding up the... Okay, you did the... Okay. Yeah, that was, hold that was on. Like, that hold was like on. six? De Devin 3000 is holding up Hazmat by finger point as we speak. <laughs> New England, please send help. Please do. <laughs> uh, yeah, we got, but honestly, played. You gotta be prepared for that. Like you might be playing the whole seven minutes. You gotta buckle in for that. You gotta play nice and chill. Looks like for the first time in the set, we're gonna see a change of scenery, running it to town and city. Good call it with Odyssey right away. You gotta keep playing that way though. You just gotta keep winning neutral. Don't overstay your welcome when you're in a good situation either, because that's what Sinji waits for. Now I'm curious to see how this uh, change of setting is going to impact things. Just because uh, even though this is hazardless town and city, it's still gonna have its transitioning platforms. It's still gonna find itself in a position where we sit at a uh, final destination phase for a very small amount of time. Uh, and we're going to be going into that right now. I'm curious to see which of these players really takes advantage of the transitioning period and if the platforms really come into play. Because I feel like the stage pick may have just been for the fact that the stage has larger blast zones than most. Right. You see duking it out. Looks like Odyssey able to find a couple back airs there. But he can't. Okay, you just got to chill, though. I like the way he's... You know, he'll run in. Oops. Okay, he's a hydro. <laughs> That's okay, though. It's okay. And stuff like that is bound to happen. You can't really let it get in your head, you know? You're bound to run his projectiles. You're fighting against Sinji. Like, that's 100% that's his job. He's going to do it. He's so good at it. Yeah, Auto Reticle is, in most situations, a great tool just for pressing the envelope on, like, getting a response out of your opponent. Not so much against Pac-Man, because every, just standing there for a little bit is not something that you want to do. You have the Fire Hydrant, the bonus fruit, everything coming at you. But Adi's looking for responses, and he's finding them. Yeah, I like that a lot. The early KO. Oh, steal that. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> Sinji just okay. I like how he looked for more offense, though, because obviously we're all looking at, you know, the dropped item. What What even is that? What, pellet? Is that yeah. what it is? It's a pellet, right? So that's the power pellet. Power at the end pellet. of the side B, um, it'll heal 1%. But we're all thinking... Odyssey should go for that, and instead he went for the offense. I liked it. That was a good mix-up. He hits that forward air. It's better than 1%. Right. Snag 2. Odyssey, again, just playing this matchup really well, really fluidly. This is looking a lot like game 2. Ooh, Bell gets revisited. That is interesting as well. Trying to use the Bell setup for the uh, the hydrant, even though Adi was set up really Ooh. high. I guess Sinji just trying to cover all the bases in this, and that's something you always have to do, especially in like how tense of a situation this is, because look at that. Imagine you've even up the stock count, and this is with, with Sinji sitting the match up. He's looking for his uh -oh. seat in Grand Finals. Ooh, 41%, like you said. Spaceship doing so much damage. See, it, that's the interesting thing too. You gotta play around both the loops. So you gotta look for the first one, see what happens, how it curls around the second time, how you gotta move around it. See what Sinji's looking for too. You gotta keep your eye on the Pac-Man and on the items. It's crazy. You, got, you have to have like some sort of ADD, you know, to keep up with everything. Yeah, there's so many little details that you have to be aware of when fighting Sinji. And on top of all of that, like Sinji will mix up what he's doing with Pac-Man himself. The aerials that he uses, the normals that he decides to pressure with. Like what are his combo pieces like? It's like playing like roller coaster tycoon. There's oh. so many little things you gotta watch for, and if you're not paying attention, it's not a fun time for anyone. That's right. Yeah, you got passengers falling out of their seats. Our birds' heads are falling off. That's right. I gotta say, Pac-Man's Pac-Man's parry animation is super hilarious. It's it's funny how they gave some characters like the coolest parry animation in the world. Their eyes are glowing yellow. They look intimidating. Oh god, that down smash. Ooh. Cover some options, baby. Good job by Sinji retaking the lead here. In game four, look at look at a punch his way into uh, winner side of Grant. Yo, he continued that combo with a down air. Hello, Sinji's rewriting the book. He's looking to put out that revision stack because he got forty five percent off of one combo. Now look at the percentage that's on board. Sinji's chilling, even though he's at one hundred and twenty six. He's still got a stock in reserve. Yeah, I mean, if you're Sinji, this is exactly what you want to see on the board. Stock lead, you're chilling. Oh, and honestly, can't grab the bell again. I feel like I saw that last game, too. It's kind of quick. You have to react to it pretty quick. Yeah, they uh, they kind of nerfed. Right. I use that term loosely. 
with the uh, the bonus fruit in that when it's not being grabbed and when it's on the ground, it's going to despawn a lot quicker. I would argue that it's actually really helpful for Pac-Man because it means it's less likely for his oh, opponents God. to steal it. But plenty of time for Pac-Man to use it. Adi, not happy about that one. It's going to be going into Sinji's favor as he finds himself into Winterside Grand Finals. And you know, the execution, you gotta give Sinji a ton of credit on his execution on converting those bell hits, man. It's not as easy as he makes it look, for sure. Like, if I try to probably mess it up like the first nine out of ten times at least, and I'm like, oh yeah. Pac-Man's a fun character to mess around with, but doing stuff like Sinji does, you gotta hit the books on that. And that's on a player like Odyssey, too, who is an insanely good player, really good movement, but, it, you know, Sinji is just such a force to be reckoned with. Moving on, he does. clean dresses in the wardrobe, you know? She's been shopping in downtown Manhattan, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's my New York reference for the day. So there you go. That's it. I did it. Proud of you. Proud of myself. Yep. There you go. Proud of myself. These two gentlemen trying to move on to face off against Odyssey in uh, Losers Finals. And this is like an interesting case where if you, I don't know if Odyssey will go Fox against the winner of this. Maybe it depends on who it is. But man, they're going to be warmed up and ready for a Palatino Ditto uh, in Losers Finals regardless. And no matter the case, Sinji knows he's going to be fighting against yet another Palatino later on. So he's already warmed up and ready to roll. Mm -hmm. The explosive flame here. See what the edge play is. Both these guys, man. This is it's gonna be a, like I said earlier, dog fight in the air a lot. I mean, this character has a lot of hang time. Great parry right there by Utopian Ray. We saw a lot of a lot of early parries from Jen in his earlier sets, but it looks like Ray is the one uh, catching on to habits earlier. I mean, I feel like these guys must have sets already. Do you, do you know any of like the set counts or anything? Uh, between Ray and Jen, I actually haven't seen them play too often. Ooh, they okay. usually uh, drop in brackets before they run into each other, or if they do, uh, actually. I don't believe I've seen them play, now that I think of it. Um, even though we've seen a lot of Palutena here in New York, I can't recall seeing too much of the Ditto itself. I've seen Ray face off against lower level Palutena's playing occasions, but sure. this is Jen we're talking about. This is someone who is climbed to the top of New York using this character, and he's cemented quite a, uh, a legacy for early on in Ultimate through use of Palutena. Definitely. I mean, if you didn't watch, you know, the house stream at the end of Smash 4, well, first off, shame on you. Second off, Jen was a very good Ryu player. Ryu, but also Sheik. It's the first stock there going to Utopian Ray. Very nice stuff from Ray. Let's see what the option is from Jen. I feel like it's so hard sometimes to hit people when you have the invulnerability. Like, I feel like it's just like a, a tricky thing in this game to do. Harder than it was in previous games, so. I don't know. It just seems hard to get your offense started, but Jen here trying to take this first stock. See what you can find. Nice parry. I mean, he showed that back air from a mile away, though. Like, they're both going to be poking at a distance with back air. They're both going to be trying to fish with Nair. It's really just a figure of, like, thinking ahead of your opponent. What are you going to try to do to anti-air that? What are you going to try to do to challenge it? Because one thing that we don't really talk about when we're talking about Palutena is that she can match in the air really well, but she can't really anti-air. That was an early stock. Great recognition. I feel like Ray, too, we said this in his earlier sets, his recognition uh, and best option choice, like his optimization of this character is very nice. That was a super early stock from Jen. Utopian Ray sending a message about this ditto and how he feels about it. Yeah, Ray has been playing with like a new level of confidence. You wouldn't be able to tell it just because his poker face is superb. But yeah. the way that Ray is able to play, he just moves smoothly. He attacks super well. He's able to play on the reversal incredibly well, whether it's out of, uh, out of shield or just dancing outside of the range of his opponents. He knows exactly when it's time for him to go in and how far he can get away with going on the, the advance. Harry and a turnaround dash attack. Good offense from Jen. He's fighting this one back. I mean, Ray, he was towards the top blast zone, and up there is really powerful from Palu. Let's see what he can find now. Good use of the teleport there. Nice mix up. Jen was looking for him to go towards the ledge, but he couldn't find it, and he couldn't find that up smash either. Ray now on the offensive. Let's see what he can find. Nice. That was a good attempt by Ray, but uh, Jen was quick enough to deal with it, so. Yeah, I mean, you got, one thing to remember is that because this is the Ditto, they're all they're both very aware of how they can cover each other's options. So they're constantly going for the mix-up, trying to read into the player habits, trying to not necessarily go for, like, what's going to work out the best, but what's going to work in this situation right here, right now, and how well is the opponent going to read into it? Trying to get the bounce over the ledge. That's something I feel like we're not going to be able to see a lot of use of just because both of these guys seem to be recovering high each time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she has a lot of good mixes, but don't forget, like, that Nair is super active, so catching her out of her teleport, it looks like both players have been looking for it. Hard to find, though, when your opponent has a couple different angles they can go in at. And here comes Jen, I mean, making quite the comeback now. It's looking real, real grim for him, but said he's fighting his way back. He's got to find his way up this ledge, though. Good avoidance of the explosive flame. That's the way to do it, is just kind of move around it. You don't want to expend any resources. You don't want to jump. You don't want to pull an early trigger and up the air dodge, anything like that. That's what the Palu wants. Jen knows that. 
Like, you bring up such a good point, because, like, expending any of those resources just puts you at such a heavy disadvantage against Palatana because she could do so much to you with so little. Ooh, okay. Dash attack and then into a back air. Another back air. Jen really finding some new life with these options. The shield has been so good for him coming, trying to make this comeback. 53% on Ray. Good response of that. Guess what it was? It was a back air. <laughs> it's just such a good option. Hey, listen, man, that's going to be the name of the game. <laughs> You're going to see plenty of that shield getting to work because that's going to get Ray the first match. That's good. Well played by Ray, closing that one out. Because Jen, always been a player that uses momentum incredibly well since I started watching him in Smash 4. I mean, in Smash 4, he had Ryu with Rage. So, like, that could really work out for you. You could really take advantage of when players get scared against you, you know, it's Ryu. There's Palo too, you saw the way Jen was able to fight back. He had a two stock deficit. You got spiked really early in the second stock. So if I'm him, pretty sure they went back to stadium. I couldn't really see. Yeah, I, I would be, I, I feel pretty good on the stage. If I'm Jen and if I'm Ray too, there's no reason not to go back here. Ray won and Jen said, you know what? You got that early KO. Let me show you what I can do. You give me a longer second stock, Ray. Game two. I, I've got a good feeling we're going to see this whole set go to Pokemon Stadium. Both these guys feel really confident moving around on this stage, and it just lends itself super well to Palutena because she can cover wide spaces really well. A lot of this ledge play that we see Palutena's strengths on is where most of the battles taking place, honestly, for PS2. And then also, the platforms are spaced in a re really solid manner where, like, if they can get their ledge canceled... Really? Yeah, you're going to really? see that a lot from Ray. Nice. He's so good at that downer. He really like is. It. Oh, yeah. It's dirty. Because, like, he's such a well-calculated player, and then he goes for these vicious options, and it just, it works. It's clean, it's well-spaced, and he just keeps on rolling with it. He doesn't let it get to his head. It's just another piece of the puzzle. That's right. I like the word you use, calculated, for sure. You see that in his gameplay big time. Explosive flame low. Catching Ray, not once, but Ooh. twice, and that's going to take a stock. Again, Jen fighting his way back from a deficit. He's got to take the lead at some point, though, Hangman, if he wants to take a game. I mean, it's, it's hard to do so. You see how even the match these Ooh. guys are. <laughs> it's like kind of like, I feel like Jen is better at dash attacking and Ray is better at down airing. And as you can see, down airing, you get more bang for your buck with. It's, I feel like it's it's very specific to this matchup, or at the very least fighting this particular opponent, because we well, you know that Palutena is going to want to be in the air, because that's where back air and neutral air are. But if you're getting constantly swatted Ooh. out of the air, you're eating that damage for free, and you're getting pelted right back down to the ground. Good job by Ray avoiding uh, the explosive flame. Went right to the ledge, was able to find his way around Jen's options. And we're seeing these two duke it out. <laughs> <laughs> Palutena dittos, ladies and gentlemen. You got back air and back air. You got uh, explosive flame, explosive flame. But here we go, down throw, follow up. Nice, good call out in the double jump. There you go, Jen taking the lead for the first time in this set. Although now he's got to try to hold on to it. It's going to be difficult to do it 107%. But Utopian Ray, Got to figure out his way in. We know back air is going to be the uh, the option, but of course Jen knows that as well. So he's got to try and match either with his own back air, or more importantly, waiting for the recovery frames on it so he can try to go in for the punish. And we've seen that both of these players can get really strong combos. That's right. Here we go. Utopian Ray been so good at the ledge today, especially that. Oh, Jen! I love the idea. I love it. Even though he lost the stock. Even if he went back up there, he's in the disadvantage and like forward tilt will probably KO, like a bunch of options. So I love the idea of Jen saying, hey man, you've hit me with two of these down airs early in stocks. I'm going to return the favor and clean up game two with one. Very good idea by Jen. I like it. But even better defense by Ray. I mean, he's able, he's able to avoid it. And now he's in a position right here to combo Jen a couple times, get these nares, keep him above him too. Very nice. And it's worth reminding that this is loser semis. This is the best of three. So the pressure's really on for Jen to take this so he can bring us into a game three. Otherwise, that's it. He's done for today's tournament. Back air, almost enough power. Now it's Ray. Oh no, the whiff grab. This could be bad. You. Oh my god. Uh, Ray is like psychic with these smashes. I really like what he's going for. He mistimed it. But he's gone for forward smash a couple times. And I like it because I feel like even if they don't hit, he kind of had the right read. You know what I'm saying? Like, it didn't right. necessarily connect, but he had a really good idea. I like the way he's thinking. Like you said, calculated. He's not throwing out smashes all willy-nilly. He didn't get to lose his semis for no reason in the stack bracket. No, yeah. There, there are some times when you just got to do it, but Palatine's smash attacks don't really lend themselves very well to that. They're yeah. very specifically spaced. Like, like, down smash is very wide, but it's low to the ground. Forward smash, very, it's only just ahead of her. And predominantly has a win box. And of course, up smash is literally just a line, just a thick line of light. Right. And Back to stadium for the final game, too. I mean, like you said, such a good power stage. Uh, the stage matches are hair, so that's really cool. And uh, also, the platforms are good, or, you know, you know whatever. <laughs> We've seen both these guys play so well on the stage all throughout the day, and Odyssey as well. So, definitely a good stage for Palutena. 
Yo, though, it's going to be an easy punish for Jem. Let's see what he finds. Nair looking for, a, looking for a scaredy cat option. Can't find one. Yeah, no. At this point in the game, both of these guys know what they can get away with. And they got to try to minimize any type of openings that they leave in their habits. Then they have to be very aware of those habits. That's a great spot dodge by uh, Utopian Ray. Oh, no. The up air. Very early KO. Very well played by Jen. Looks like he's going to take the lead early in this game three instead of waiting for it to happen later on. And that's something that he needs. He was able to clutch out the last match. However, a lot of it was played off of the heel. Like, if he's going to try and take away this set, he needs to just run with this momentum. Do not give Utopian Ray an opportunity to advance on him. Forward air, nice job by, I like the pressure from Ray. Jen's gonna get his jump back though, see what he can do. Nice job with the teleport. Ray unable to find him with that down air, but he does keep him at a disadvantage, pushing him against the ledge. Great fadeaway back air. See what we can find now, too. Looking for the down tilt. Not a whole lot yet. Jen parrying his way out of the corner, though. Very clutch play. I also like how dash attack was the immediate option out of parry, just so yeah. he can make sure he can charge forward with a safe move. Absolutely, yeah. He's, he's done it a couple times throughout the set. It's just really good. Nice. Good DI again from Jen. Where'd he go? That was there cute. And he's managed okay, to come back. Okay. It's all worth it. He's not even a little bit worried. But Ray... Firing back, they're tied in terms of stocks. This is a game three situation, Hangman. Loser of this game, going home. Yeah, they're out of it. Someone's got to fight their way to, to uh -oh. try and duel it out with Odyssey. So even, Ooh. no matter who wins, they still have to get a second serving of Palutena. That's right. Yeah, I hope you're not full yet. That's for sure, because a lot more coming out. And then the winner of that play, Sinji, which could potentially be a reset. So you're seeing a lot of Palutena, that's for sure. If, I hope if, you like this character. Yeah, right, right. That's what we're trying to tell you. For the up air, can't find it, but this offense from Ray, it's been all Ray in the second stock. Really finding these holes in Jen's defense, able to call him out. He's catching on to his habits, Hangman. And that's what we were talking about earlier. It's like you find these habits, you figure out how to punish. A lot of what the previous uh, stocks were, were these guys trying to duel it out and figuring out what they can get away with with forward air, neutral air, a lot of explosive flames. Yeah. But now we're going back to what the match started with, and that was a ton of dueling with back air. They're looking for that safe poke through where they don't have to worry about what the other opponent wants to throw out. Because even if it doesn't damage them, it's going to catch out. It's going to keep it safe. Neutral going to pick up the teleport. And just like that, Ray sitting with the lead. Like you said, calculated. He waited that out. He shielded the explosive flame. And look at him just taking out the lead now. After that KO now, he's going to loop some more together. Jen looking for an answer here, trying to find a stock. It's good positioning, but he's got to find his way in. Looking for the up smash. Good challenge there by Utopian Ray. The forward air very quick, able to be out that up smash. Super smart. And Ray is just playing this one by the books now. Like you said, choosing nice, safe options. Again, looking for the Nair. Trying to stay alive. He doesn't want Jen. You know, he, Jen takes the stock here. Suddenly, he has some momentum back. You really just want to chill if you're Ray. Don't want to throw the stock away to anything foolish. You'll take that Nair, too. You're fine. You're in disadvantage, but you're okay. Jen's got to make a count at the ledge here. Unfortunately, he's going to dip a little too deep with the Nair. And now, he's the one who's sitting, trying to come back into center stage. Ray's going to let him, though, as he's forcing a very cat and mouse game. Yeah, great. Again, recognition by Utopian Ray has been amazing. Like, he saw Jen dip really low, trying to catch his teleport on the way back to the ledge, but the up tilt is going to do it. We're coming down to a last stock situation. Who's going to take it? Who wants it more? Who's hungry? And Who wants to move on? Who wants to fight Odyssey? Who wants to try to fight Sinji? Looking like Ray right now, but Jen, no, he's fighting back. Good rolling, good tech rolling by Ray, though. Look at how well these guys are dueling it out for center stage. They know that they can get the most off of this battle where they carry to the platform, they carry to the ledge, they sit in advantage. Even if they don't get their early stocks, they're racking up so much percentage. And right now, that's Jen. And he's managed to break away this deficit very well as soon as he got that stock off the right. Ooh, okay. That's what I'm talking about with Ray Smashes. They are reads 100% all the way. Like you said, very calculated, very cool customer. Doesn't want to throw anything out willy-nilly. It was a great call. It didn't even KO, but it did a lot of damage. Good run of grab for the punish. Jen controlling center stage very well with these fadeaway back airs. Pressure's mounting. That's a good option against the back airs. The dash attack, like, coming in, it kind of sneaks underneath it. You've seen both players do it throughout the set. It's good Good Palu uh, ditto technology for sure. Yeah, when, when we keep on bringing up this back air, I'm really specific with mentioning it has that upper body Ooh. invincibility. So yeah. if you're charging at her legs and at the lower part of her dress, it's going to get caught out, and because that dash attack is safe, it's a great way to catch it out. Keep yourself safe on the approach, rack up that little bit of damage. When we're talking about damage, look at how dead even this match is right now. Jen doing an amazing job, able to recover. Oh, okay. Forced to air dodge. He still has his jump. He's going to be managing to come back. Jen, I think kind of a little bit of flood there on the nair. Great. That parry, That if he missed that, pretty sure the set's over. Supposed to flame Ray, fighting his way up the ledge now. It's his turn. Can he respond? Jen looking for the back airs, of course. Nair to defend himself through the auto reticle. Very nice. 
Pressure up the stage. Jen, forcing an option. Nair, that's going to catch Ooh. him. Is that going to take the set? That Ooh. is. Okay, okay. Good. I thought he told uh, it down. Yeah, Oh, my God, yeah. Okay, Jen, good job keeping your head on your shoulders. Now, look at him clutching his heart, too. What a win. Heart of a champion that he is clutching. Look at this final play here. I like the way he got a little aggressive off stage, forcing Ray to go towards the blast zone, limiting his options, fading back in, getting the old trusty, old reliable, Palatine and Nair. And that rising Nair at the ledge was not something we saw until game three. We saw it come out from Utopian Raid against Jen in the first stock, but it was an adaptation, something they held in the pocket until at the very end. And it's really good for catching teleports. Going to be Fox against Palu. You know, actually, interesting thing about Palu is like, I was talking to Nairo about her, uh, just talking to him in his stream, and I was like, hey man, like who does well against Palutena? Because I was trying to envision it, and he goes, anyone that can get in does well against her is how he feels. And right now, Odyssey showing that off, 56% right out of the gate against Jen, and Jen's gonna have to shift gears quickly. I mean, the Palo Ditto is gonna be very different than fighting against a twitchy Fox. Yeah, and this is, when it comes to Foxes, this is someone who is able to turn the breakers on if he's going to play lightning fast, play aggro, just constantly stay in your face. And then if he's going to hang back, try to bait a response, figure out how to find your habits and then blow them up later on. And Fox just has such good movement. I mean, yeah, Palu has really good hitboxes, but they kind of linger a little bit. If you're a Fox and you have good reaction speed, like Odyssey does, that's going to be, okay, maybe, should have been punished. But maybe, he needs to, maybe he needs to clean up the Fox play. You know, I know he's been on Palu a lot, so maybe the Fox a little bit rusty. But either way, fighting his way back on stage, that back air is going to clean it up. Jen going up the first stock. Now, I'm really curious to see what are the, Ooh. what's going to be the long game for both of these players. Where Jen, he knows that Fox is just going to be able to break his defenses. That's always what Fox has been able to do. And we even see that as Adi cleans up the stock count very quickly. But also, like, how are you going to stave away Fox? Where are you going to keep him? What are you going to do if he stops pressing in on you? And then on the flip side of the coin, it's a matter of, like, how is Adi going to approach this matchup where he knows how well Palutena can duel with an aggressive character like Fox? Okay, jab, dropping the shield, though. Jen taking a little damage for that, but worse yet, he's at the ledge. Grab from Odyssey again. Trying to keep him trapped here. Fox, very, very good ledge trapper, but Jen able to find his way out. I feel like, again, like, I feel like that was an up air, that was a back air, that was something... I don't know if Odyssey was warming up the Fox on the side, but he's, he's normally very proficient. I mean, at least from what I remember this Fox. Yeah, I think it's a matter of just being confident in his punishes, figuring out the moves that are going to be the best for opening up Palu. Because another thing to note is, like, a lot of the success we saw from Light earlier in the day with this Fox, he was always willing to swing, and he oh, would yeah. swing hard, whether it was the up smash that he's so well known for, short hop back air, just bringing some sort of chain to the, the end. Ooh, the call out. That's a call out 100%. Saying, hey, Odyssey, I'm noticing you're short hopping a lot. Come catch this up smash. Very nice job by Jen. Again, retaining the lead. Like, all of these factors that are working out super well for Jen is what Adi should be exhibiting. But we're seeing a lot of like, poor decisions right now with how he's trying to control the pace of the match. He's just falling right into the Palutena game plan. It's just tough to get out of sometimes, especially, you know, Fox in the disadvantage is just really, really tough sometimes. Good Nair catching Odyssey on his way in for the explosive flame. Odyssey going low, and then the tricky Fox bypassing the ledge and catching Jen sleeping a little bit. Yeah, the fact that Firefox is, like, so heavily uh, disjointed now makes it a bit safer to poke around with. It's okay, explosive flame. Yeah. Clean it up. That's it. Right there. Game one going to Jen. Uh, I don't know if I'm Odyssey. I'm thinking about it because I think his Palu is playing super-duper well today. Uh, but Jen coming in hot off of a uh, nice Palutena did a win against Ray, so it's kind of like, man, do I really want to, you know, fight him? Is Jen eating right Yeah, he, he's currently kidding? eating those. Is that ramen noodles? Yeah. Jen, come on, man. <laughs> You're about to get at least third at this tournament. I think you could splurge a little bit. Here's some yeah, he splurged. Old. He got the big bowl. Oh, he got the big one. All right. He got the spicy one, right? <laughs> it's like, it's like, did he get chicken in it? You know, it's like 50 cents more. Oh, he's sticking with the fox. All right. Let's go, Adi. Yeah, I like it. I think he just, I think there were some things in his game plan that weren't completely there. Like, he kind of missed a, like a back air, a couple punishment opportunities, nothing huge, but I feel like he knows he could play better, and he's sticking with the pick because of it. I like it, because I like Odyssey's Fox a lot. Also, we just commentated Palutator Ditto, so it's okay to take a little break from that. I feel that, man. And we're going back to Pokemon Stadium 2 for the game. I feel like, even though, even though Adi didn't like play at his best, there were hints of his game plan. There were hints right. of like, what was going to work. The fact that he's constantly approaching at the ground, the fact that he's waiting for Jen to come to him, mostly. Even if he's going to be forcing a lot of the interactions on his half, he's forcing Jen to come to him as far as like the location of the battles. And that's going to be a lot of the ledge. He doesn't want Jen to hang around in center stage. 
like the way that Jen used the auto reticle to keep uh, Odyssey, you know, in his uh, in his offensive net. Let's see what we can find now. Trying to find the back air, miss spacing it. He's gonna pay for it big time. A forward smash finisher right there. Very nice by Odyssey. Let's see what he can find now. Jen instead in the driver's seat, but in there takes it back. Ledge play from Odyssey. I Man. like it. Staying patient. He doesn't want to commit too hard because he knows he can get poked. He knows that forward smash isn't as reliable. I feel like it will be a really good mix-up option, so keep an eye out for that forward smash at the ledge at some point in this set. Oh, God, not getting attacked or anything right there. Good scoop up by Jen, getting the up smash, and again, we're seeing Jen with the lead. See what he does with it, too. I have a feeling you're going to see some nice spacing from him. Hold on. Odyssey on the hump, though. Look at him. Odyssey's been doing a really good job baiting out stuff from Jen just with his movement, like just his dash dancing, trying to pull out a, a long, you know, Palatina hitbox, but instead we see Jen off the stage, or Odyssey off the stage, and Jen keeping him there. We're still seeing a ton of Tomahawks come out from Adi, and this was something that we didn't really get a chance to see with his Palatina, mostly because she's not going to get as much of fame, that type of movement option. But when you're constantly making Jen guess, he's not going to be certain 100% of the time. He's going to find that opening, finally get the up smash, put some marks on the board. I like that double jump air dodge too. I mean, Fox obviously his biggest weakness is being cut off on his way back to the stage. So very nice job by Odyssey mixing it up, staying alive in his second stock. Let's see if you find a little more offense here, Hangman. Now, has what I'm really wondering about right now is the idea that, like, this is Jen who just came off of a solid win. He's playing a ton. He's on fire, and he's already been playing well in regards to the rest of the tournament's performances. Like, he's got to be feeling it in fighting this Fox as well. That's right. And I mean, Jen was sent to losers by Wingling, I believe. Remember yes. that correctly? Did I, did I make that up? I'm going to I'm, I'm double check that for you real quick. But in either case, like, Jen's been going on quite the run through losers. He did lose to Lingling pretty early on, actually, right out of pool. So, he's been going on, I feel like there's two, two things that can happen there. You go on a long losers run, you can just keep the momentum up, keep it nice and strong, or, or, you kind of run out of steam, and that's it. But right now, he's definitely looking like the man with all the momentum. He's looking like the man to beat in this tournament, even though Sinji is waiting in Grand's on Winter's side. Ooh, I like that idea. I feel like Odyssey's movement off platforms has been really nice. He's unable to connect that up there, though. Yeah, I, I've been saying earlier in the day that Jen was, like, at least my favorite to win today. Okay. And that's just because he's been showing really well lately at the, uh, at the local tournaments here for Xeno. And up in Westchester, like, he's just been performing super well. It's mostly just because he's super confident with how he's moving, what he's able to challenge with, how much he's willing to get away with, and then just not letting, just not being deterred from his game plan. He's going to be up another point on the board. Adi's fighting a hell of a deficit now. Let's note here, too. Jen's coming off a win against Utopian Ray in the Palutena Ditto, but he also defeated Light earlier today, 2-0 Fox versus Palutena. So I feel like if, I, if I'm Odyssey, I'm like, are you kidding me? Both my characters today, and you beat two very good players with them. He's trying to make himself stand out a little bit here, though. Let's see what Adi can do. He is down 0-2. I like how he's taking his time, thinking about it, going to the town and city. It's going to be the choice. Let's see where he goes with the character. Is it going to be King K. Rool? I hope so. Oh, I hope so. Ooh, Falcon. Falcon! Does he play Falcon? I haven't seen the get Adi the, Falcon. Get the, get the victory music queued up. <laughs> oh, it's, it's it's already getting ready. Oh, my God. He's definitely got that on a tab somewhere, but this is not something I have seen. This is God. Odyssey's Falcon. Now, Falcon, notably absent from today's tournament as Nick, Nick C. Nick C, my man. Not here today. I love Nick C. He's such a fun player to watch. He has a great stream, too, actually. So, guys, you know, shout out to Nick C. Give me <laughs> <laughs> he did. He just landed the first hit. Calm down, Devin. I think it's just because we said Nick C three times, like Beetlejuice. Like if you say Nick C three times, that plays. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, Odyssey doing a pretty decent job here. I feel like off stage is kind of a nightmare for Falcon in this matchup. Like Nair is just so good at catching him out of his stuff, but we're gonna see how he has Super to recover. Good. Although this does oh, harken God. back to uh, what you were saying earlier when you're referring to. Oh, like, that's it. That's a that's stock. Gross. Yep. That's yep. so that was gross. Nasty. That was double parry uh, too. It's it harkens. <laughs> it probably gets back to what you were calling earlier about characters that can get in on Palu are going to be able to beat her. And there really are fewer characters than Falcon who are renowned for being super fast, super aggressive, and super dangerous. Jen doesn't give a damn about that. Absolutely Look not. at how much percentage he's managed to put on to Adi's second stock. Jen's chilling Ooh, on his what? first still. <laughs> See how fast he just flew out of there on that back throw? Oh, okay. Odyssey on the hunt here. I like how he's pushing his offense there. Can't get the sweet spot of the knee, though. Here we go. Feigning that. He's showing that back air a lot. Looking for the forward smash to mix up the timing. Can't find it, though. Down air, up air. Good combo. Not enough yet, though. Whoa! The up smash is really strong for Falcon this game, actually. Okay. 
Odyssey. Again, still on the hunt here. Back throw, is that? Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah, that's it. Oh, boy. Jen going up big time here. Odyssey really has a mountain of work in front of him to do. Yeah, I think it's just like, Adi just seems lost with the characters that he plays. And going in for the Falcon, it's, it's similar enough in his I play like style. But it's like, he's still oh, floundering okay. around and he's going to do so in exploding fashion as Jen takes a 3-0. Yeah? <laughs> Word? Play, yeah, right here. Right with the spike. <laughs> you guys hate Falcon, don't you? Isn't it like, we do hate like Falcon. The, we, love, we love Nick, but we hate Falcon. Why do you guys hate Falcon? Can you please? Uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, so he, he took an upset kind of early. Winner's quarters final, which is not where we expected. What was Jen seated today? Can I ask that? Uh, numbers. Fourth? Third? Mm. Fifth? Something like that. In my heart, right. he was number one. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Which one? Probably, yeah, okay. Either way, we're gonna get into game one. <laughs> Buckle in, Hangman, because I have a feeling, well, actually, I don't know how Jen's gonna play this. I felt like, you know, we kind of saw a little mix of, you know, from Odyssey, got a little aggressive at points. For the most part, he found the most success when he was just chilling and waiting and not letting Sinji control and dominate the matchup with his uh, bonus fruit items. Now, I brought this up earlier about how all the Politanas in New York have different styles of play, and from Jen, I think it's just the fact that he's just unshaken with when he wants to end out of stock. Like, he may not have the fanciest of movement, as we don't see too many teleport cancels from him. Jen? Yeah. Okay. Um, he may not be as, like, aggressive as Ray, and we know this just from the lack of down airs and random smashes, and it's like, even though Ray calculates it all, like, it's still just, like, with demonic aggression. Jen? Sort of, you get the best of both worlds because he always seems like he's ready to <laughs> do something to throw you off balance. But oh, okay. Ooh. I feel like he could have gone for a, maybe charge on a forward smash or something. But I think he just took the safe option where he's like, I'm going to take the damage. I don't want to, you know, if it doesn't connect with him, I don't want to be stuck charging a smash. But now we're seeing Jen retaliating. See what he does. He's getting aggressive off stage, which is something we really didn't see, you know, from Odyssey, which I respect because Pac-Man, he's really hard to hit off stage. He has a couple different options to mix it up and a lot of active hitboxes too. Oh yeah, he's a weasel of a character, man. This character has so many options for moving around off stage. And like, he's not too concerned about getting back to the stage. As you can see from side, we bring him out deep, but you gotta be ready to, to try and contest it. It's still Pac-Man. That's right. Yeah, I mean, Jen doing, I mean, and I like it because Jen's showing that option early. So like through a long set, you gotta win two sets against Sinji. You're gonna have to mix it up at some point. So he's showing his hand early with the uh, offense or with the aggression off stage. I'd like to see how he mixes it up though. I mean, sometimes he's gonna want to set up at the ledge or try to catch Sinji or recovering high or something like that. Like, there's a lot of time to go in this set. It, we have the potential to go into a game of 10. Uh, but sure. if we're going to get there, it's going to be from uh, from Jen having to reset. Be, but I don't really know if we're going to get there, to be honest with you. Sinji's played very well at, against the current meta, I would say. His As usual, right? has, like, it would stood the test of time. Like, even though he's learning what his tools do differently now, and he's adjusting to a lot of changes around Pac-Man, like, He's still so assured of what he can do with Pac-Man. He's so... He believes in this character so hard, and he it really comes through in his play. Uh, yeah, Sinji's Pac-Man withstanding the test of time, unlike the real Pac-Man in real life, uh, only having one good game. That's it. Oh, that's, well, that's Miss Pac-Man was good, too. Uh, oh, well, that's Miss Pac-Man. That's her own game. See what I'm saying? Miss Pac-Man not being an Echo Fighter or a skin for Pac-Man still Weird. makes me tired. Yeah, should be in there, but either case, Bell, good recovery from Jen. Okay, run up and grab. All right, I like it. The down throw, too. All right, Pac-Man, you do you. I also like how he put the bell away there. He tried to use it again later on, but uh, one of the new features about Pac-Man that we highlighted a little bit earlier into the stream was uh, what a lot of Pac players are calling recycling, where you can grab the fruit and you can charge it again and bring it out as something stronger. So, like, you're constantly holding onto the bell, but then, if need be, just recharge that into the key. Definitely. I mean, it works for the lower level or the earlier stage items too. You know, you can you can really mix it up for sure. Here's a question. You might not know the answer, and that's okay because I definitely don't. Can you do bell, re-grab the bell while they're stunned, and charge it into a key and hit them with it? That uh, sounds cool. I don't know if you have enough frames to do it though. It sounds sick, but there's not enough stun on the bell. Okay, gotcha. Like the time that it takes to re-grab it, then charge it, and then throw it. By that point, the opponent's going to be flying from whichever direction that they get hit with the bell. True. 
Like, mo most, more often than not, we're seeing Sinji respond to the uh, the bell with up smash, and the mix-up tends to be forward smash. I've yet to see him land down smash, but the idea is that he's got them stunned. He just wants them off the board. Whether it's going to kill or not right. is not as important, but the fact that they're off stage eating tons of damage is what matters the most. Good use of the hydrant there, catching the teleport. That's where you got to hit Palo when she's trying to recover. Okay, oh, that's going to be all oh, it. Yeah, that is going to be it. Okay. That was a little bit interesting, of yeah, yeah. interesting. Well, because well, he's running up, you know he's going to charge a smash, so I feel like you might be preemptively DIing for the uh, forward smash, but he came out. It's kind of hard to see what he's doing with all the crap flying in the way. Like the hydrant was there, the fruit, like all that stuff was kind of uh, optical interference. Yeah, you're going to get that often. There's there's a lot that's going on, especially with Palutena and Pac Man. There's a lot of particles on the screen. Yep. That is super true. But we're going to be going into game two. And so Jen is one of these guys that switches his costume after every game. Is that it? Yeah, he's just feeling the palettes, man. Like You brought it up first. Palutena got amazing colors. That's like super ritzy. Like you wear a dress once and then you just throw it away. You know, and you, you move on to the next one. You just buy another one. That's what you do. Yeah. Jen's, Jen's Palutena, super ritzy is what I have to say about it. Like, she, she got that money. That's true. What's wrong with this one? She's got the sh money. Here we go, though. Game two onto Smashville. Now, I find this to be an interesting choice just because we haven't seen it picked into too often, but there's a lot less space here to contest. I feel like that's the important part. Jen can fight for this space a little bit easier, but on the same foot, Sinji can control a lot more space with his traps. Yeah, exactly. Uh, as I said earlier, I play Belmonts, and I kind of actually like the stage because if, I, if I'm hiding underneath that platform, underneath the dead center still platform, I'm controlling so much space. Like, I can turn to either side, down smash, almost it. It looks like Sinji's going to be doing the same here. Controlling the center space. Just chilling. He's, he's winning right now. Trying to catch him in his movement, too. Nice try by Sinji, but Jen just a little too fast. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of the trampoline and the fire hydrant sitting just outside the space between the platform and the ledge. Just because those are going to control a lot of where Jen is allowed to move. Between the fire hydrant just being in the way. Not even the water or the fact that it could potentially be a hitbox. Like, it's just going to be in the way of a lot of moving. But speaking about it being a hitbox, that's what's going to be taking the first stop. Yeah, the timing there from Sinji Super Clutch. I like how he used, too, like the way he broke down the hydrant, ending it with the up, up air. Really good positioning of that. And here we go. Sinji, look at the combos right now. 60%. I mean, don't let him fool you. I know Sinji plays super patiently a lot. But that's when he gets an opening, man, he really makes a count. 79% already on Jen. Yeah, his combo game is nuts. And even though we goof on Sinji, for being like a really patient player, playing sure. a really campy character. Like, he still has that New York fire in him. His sure. combo game is unmatched. That's right. And that's the thing, too, is like, I was saying it earlier, like, you really got to play to the strengths of your character, though. Pac Man's not a brawler. Like, he does not want to really get in. He wants to set up and do, like, set up from far away and play nice and safe. And Sinji's doing it optimally. Got to give him credit, man. He's making it work with the character that a lot of people really wrote off. You know, in the beginning of Ultimate, even all throughout Smash 4, he's really up to proving people wrong. No matter what it took. You gotta respect that. Like, Pac-Man's one of the few characters in the cast who can really get away with defensive options, and that's just because a lot of his kit surpasses what the mechanics of the game are allowing you. Where a lot of characters lost their out-of-shield options or being able to have a really strong anti-shield oh, oh, game. Oh, oh, okay, God. Jen, okay. Jen firing back there, sending the fire hydrant back, extinguishing the Pac-Man, but Sinji, I mean, dude. There's one person I really don't want to have to fight back against with a whole stock lead. It is Sinji, man. Like, it's just going to take forever. You have to land so many combos. Pac-Man has so many good combo breakers. He doesn't have a an, a recovery you can intercept very easily. Like, it's, you just know you got to work for your stocks against Pac-Man, though. Yeah. Pac-Man as a whole is a character that you really need to hit the notes on if you want to know what you're fighting. Like, regardless of the fact that if you're fighting Sinji and, like, having to deal with his combos, knowing what he's capable of with whichever fruit, like... If there's just so much that's going on, you got to keep in mind and knowing how to deal with it properly. And to Jen's credit, he's been he's been trying well. It's just ending up the stocks has been a struggle, and I feel like that's just because. <gasps> there you go. That's how he challenged Pac-Man on his way back. Good interception by Jen there, putting himself right back into this game. Kind of my words there too. Uh, Jen getting a little overzealous, running into the grab instead. See if we can find turnaround bell, forward smash. Pac-Man looking super serious. His eyeballs turning into himself, taking that game two down. Sinji in prime position to take down this tournament. Jen in quite the hole right now. He's going to have to dig himself out. If Jen wants to win this tournament, he's going to have to win the first three games, reset the bracket, win three, get, himself, get himself another, and not let Sinji have any opportunity to take things back. So, yeah, if he wants to do this, we're looking at, let's say, okay, let's say, wait a minute. 
We're seeing a secondary. We're seeing. I like it. What? I like it. Wario? Sinji has proven a lot of things today, but one thing he has proven for sure is that he can hang with really high level Palutenos. It looks like Jen has been working on a character on the side. It's going to be the Wario. He's going to try to use the air acceleration and movement combo potential of this character. We've seen a lot of top, top tier players do really good things with this character. We're going to see what Jen can do now, too. Like, we got a chance to see Wario a little bit earlier in today's Ooh. stream. And it's a character that, you know, New York's not unfamiliar with. Um, but definitely a character that the spotlight's a lot more focused on, thanks to the likes of Tweak and Gluttony. But seeing Jen pick him out is a very strange choice, just because it doesn't seem like a lot of his tools are, like, signature of Jen's style. But well, to the same time, this is a character that finds himself really comfortable pressuring in the air. Yeah. And more importantly than not, I feel there's very reliable kills. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, if you're going to be playing a long game against Pac-Man, Wario has a mechanic for waft where you could potentially get off two good wafts in a set if you're playing against Pac-Man and the timer's running down. It's definitely very possible. So I, I like this counter pick. Jen already doing a pretty decent job with it. I mean, considering it's a secondary against Sinji's character he's been playing for 30 years or whatever. I don't know. However, <laughs> however long he's been playing Pac-Man. Just like that, Jen right into this game. Wario also a heavy character too. So Sinji's going to be working a little harder for his KOs as well. I feel like another thing to take into consideration is the fact that Chomp is going to give an extra le uh, layer of defense for Jen. Not only is he going to be able to break through a lot of Sinji's own defenses, but he can use that to eat the bonus fruit and to eat the fire hydrant. Not unable to eat that bell, though. Uh, Sinji ringing Jen's bell right there, taking the first stock. The thing, too, is like... Wario, I feel like, like I like the way Jen went for the WAP there because he's gonna get another one, maybe two, if he uses them, you know, at that amount of time. So it's just a good idea from Jen. Here we go, trying to set up at the ledge himself. All right, I like how Jen was confident in just going for that up tilt to end Ooh, up, the up there. Nice. I haven't seen that kill yet. That's, that's a bit of a weird one. But uh, what I was gonna say is. Jen was very specific about what move he wanted to break Fire Hydrant with because of the way that it was going to set. We saw that the up tilt started dangling the Fire Hydrant. It's just a matter of knowing what your offenses can do against a character's tools, and it seems like Jen has a very good idea of what Wario is going to be capable of against uh, Pac-Man. I gotta give a shout out to that Galaga combo and set up off stage. Since he turned around, grabbed it, uh, and then turned around and threw it right at Jen, racked up so much damage. That was super nice. Um, I don't know, man. This one, this one's looking tough for my man Jen. He's going to reach. Yeah. Yes, it is. He is down. Do his last stock of his tournament potentially. This is what I'm talking about. This is what he did last time. Look at that. Even though the combo doesn't hit, he cleared a clear path back to the ledge for himself. It's just really smart from Sinji. Just really, really innovative, good Pac-Man play that we're seeing from him. Just making his character as airtight as possible. Like, it goes without si that saying. But when Sinji's feeling himself, when he's, like, knowing what he's able to set up with and with how confident he's able to set up the traps... It's intense to fight him. That's like the best way to describe it. Because you can you can joke on Pac-Man all you want. You can figure that he's a really weird character. You can't be certain what you're fighting. But Sinji knows what he's playing with. He knows what he's capable of. Right. And he plays with that level of confidence. He knows that you could just go all in with Pac-Man sometimes. And it seems like Jen's got to figure out the matchup as he goes with a character that he's not nearly as familiar with. Right. Meanwhile, Sinji doesn't care what he's fighting. It could be meta threats all day. It could be other awkward characters. He knows that he's sticking to Pac-Man and he's just going to let it rock. I mean, both these characters are kind of seeing a mini renaissance of themselves from Smash 4. I mean, Wario, obviously, you already said Tweak. Oh, hold on. Not for the Hydrant. Tweak and uh, Gluttony. Down air, though, going all the way down there. Very nice stuff. Able to make it back with the bike and the up E. Uh, was ready to go as well. But we're also seeing, you know, Sinji, obviously, you know, probably the most well known Pac Man, but also T. Pac Man got second place. Uh, which tournament was that? Was that, uh, was that Umabora? Sure, either way. T got second as well uh, this weekend with Pac Man in a very stacked bracket. So, I mean, this character, who knows, man? We might see more uh, Pac Man come out of the woodwork, and that key is going to seal it out. Sinji locking the door on that last stock. Closing out the tournament, 3-0 over Jen. Very well played. I like Jen's idea going with the Wario. Like you said, like Chomp is just a good tool in that matchup. I feel like it's just a good approaching tool because Pac-Man likes to set up the Hydrant. You jump over it and you have an aerial command grab with Chomp, but that's it for us today, man. Yeah, it's, it's been a really fun bracket for us. Doubles was exciting. Singles has been, I feel very interesting to see just because New York's known for having a good amount of character variety, but I feel like we saw a lot of that sort of boiled down. I know, I know you're giving me a look because Holland Santa was very much here. Oh, no. It's, never mind. It was